Hello, chat. How are we all doing today? Are we doing good? Because I'm going to fix that, okay? If we're all doing good, I'm going to make my life incredibly more difficult. Uh, because today, we start upon a journey. A journey. Um, to complete an achievement. Which is for whom the bell tolls. Which means we need to own the entire world as Tellum. No vassals, no colonies, no allies. Only tell them all the way, 100% everything. <sighs> so, I don't know if this is going to be the run that where we actually successfully conquer the world. Uh, but we are going to go through and give it our best shot using a strategy that I have kind of come up with that I think will be best for our situation. Uh, nope, we cannot form another tag. We cannot play in releases of asshole. We have to play. We have to start as tell them in 1444 and end as tell whenever the game ends. Uh, there are a couple of different paths that you could go down as tell them. Some more tempting than others. Uh, we're going to go over that before we jump right in. So we're not going to get straight into gameplay. We're going to do a little bit of discussion about how we're kind of going to go about it um, and the general game plan. I've already got a save, though, that I started that looks like it's going to be a good start for us. So we're good on that front, at least. I don't have to sit here and just redo starts to get what looks to be a decent starting position. Uh, but it's 1444. I have it unpaused. I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but we'll see what ends up going on. Uh, hello. It's in the way. I can't see all the names. I can't see all the names. I can't see who's at the top of the list. There. Oh, no, I'm being blocked from saying hello to people. Literally 1984. Uh, well, hello, whoever's number one. I can't see your name. Maybe I can, like, peek through it. I'm really close. Oh, it's just my announcement that I'm live. L. Uh, hello, Scottish Brian Tavarna, Nurkor, Professional Street Mugger, Candy, Black Odd, Intro Knight, Supreme Overlord, uh, Moffel, Balzac, Valencia, uh, da, 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 Meister Antho. Uh, da, 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 Did I get everybody? Uh, Nora Diaz. Hello, uh, Ikario. Hello, and thank you for the nine months of subs. I do appreciate that. Uh, Master Code. Hello. Uh, da, 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 da. Tutsa, hello. Yes, it is a one tag, unfortunately. Uh, Meister Antho, thank you for the two months of subs. Do appreciate that. Very kind of you. Uh, I think I got everybody. I think so. I think I got everybody. I think if I miss you, I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, let's let's turn the music down a little bit here. Um, still have it going, but don't want it to be as loud. So, and Ellie, hello. Welcome. Uh, welcome to hell. <laughs> we've all died, we've gone to hell, and uh, this is where we're stuck now is with the Talon World Conquest, or at least an attempt at it. So, let me get a Google document open so we can kind of talk about what exactly I want to do with this. Oh god, it's so bright though. Oh, maybe I just opened Notepad. Oh, it's so bright. Notes. That's also very bright. Is there any way? Is there like a dark mode? No. Page setup. Um. No. View. No. It's also bright. I'm gonna blind everybody. There is a notepad or dark mode for Notepad Plus Plus. I do have Notepad Plus Plus on here. So maybe that's what I do instead. Notepad plus plus. Oh. Oh, this is when I was doing Godherja modding stuff. Uh, new. Okay. And then I need to go. Is under view? No. I should have been ready for this. Style configurator? I don't know. 
Oh, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blackboard? Sure. It's still kind of scuffed. But it's not as blinding, at least. Okay. Uh, we can just play EU4 music, actually, I think. While we're... We're chilling. Sure. Okay. So, no path plus plus. Do, do, do. Rage quit? No, no, no rage quitting. No rage quitting. Display capture. Okay. Let's move my face over here. <sighs> Is this a Talon Republic torn in to gun Durak or Talon release friend? No, no, we're gonna stay as Tellum. Just gonna stay as Tellum. No horde allowed. Um, defeats to purpose. <sighs> Even though that would be nice. Okay, so Tellum, right? What do we have as Tellum? What are our benefits? Here's the answer. <laughs> We've got nothing. That's really small. Can I make this larger? Uh. I can like zoom in. There we go. Nothing. We have nothing. Okay. The national ideas of Tellum. Uh, let me show you. Well, I'm not gonna show you. I'm gonna write them down because we're we're doing we're doing planning and shit. Okay. Okay. Ideas. We have. I don't actually know how to use Notepad plus plus. Is there like a like a little thing? at all i don't know it doesn't matter okay our traditions give us minus 10 percent dev cost yeah and uh plus one diplo relations bad <laughs> fun fact not good not good at all for what we're hoping for here um we don't need to develop things, and uh, the Diplo relations, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that at some point. We also get, um, this is really difficult, I need, I need three monitors in this moment. First world problems. First idea, we get plus two <laughs> Diplo relations. <laughs> sorry, 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 I, I did that wrong. It's plus one Diplomat. Plus one Diplomat, plus two Diplo Relations. So plus one Diplomat is good. Plus two Diplo Relations is, you know, plus two Diplo Relations. We then get Monarch Diplo plus one and 50% Inno Gain. That's cool. Free Monarch points is always good. And free Inno Gain is fine. We get... The next one is Tell My Espionage, which is actually one of the strongest ideas, I think. Uh at all in the game, which is 100% spy network construction and uh, detection, which is an insane amount of spy network to get. Absolutely massive. In order to get that through ideas, you would need to take, I believe it's, you need espionage to get plus 50, and then you need to take a second idea group, which would be... Where are you? Spy network construction and infrastructure. So you would need espionage infrastructure to get to that level of spy network. So having that just right off the bat is actually pretty good. Uh, praise the cube. Yes, praise the cube for these great ideas that we have. All right. Praise the cube. They're criers. Yeah, they they do propaganda. <laughs> they do propaganda for the empire. Uh, also, keep in mind, uh, we don't have a mission tree. Just... Keep that in mind, no missions. At all. None. Zero. Not a zilch. Except for like the base ones. Uh, next we have Power Projection from Insults. Plus 100%. Useless. Useless by the time we get it. If it was right in the beginning, that'd be great. But by the time we get to our one, two, three, fourth idea group, or fourth idea, it's not. All that significant. Uh, we then get a solid 10% <laughs> national tax. Wow! National tax? We love national tax. <laughs> and then, oh, it gets even better. We get plus 
100%. Rebel support efficiency. Which is useless. It's literally useless. There's not a single world in which you ever use that, unless you're really going out of your way. And then we get to another of their actually good ideas, which is minus 5% all power cost, which is good. And minus 20% um, envoy travel time, which is also very nice to have the later into the game we go. And then finally, at the very end, we get plus one free policies. So also very good. So there are some benefits in here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, we don't have any mill ideas. We have one, two, three ideas that are completely useless for us. These three things don't do anything, not anything real. Uh, thank you, Ellie, for the 100 bits. If only the natural tax was improved mercantilism cost. Now, much we appreciate mercantilism here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. So, what do we do with this, right? It's not like we're going to have a cracked military. We don't have core creation cost. We don't have province war score cost reductions. Literally just diplomacy. And so diplomacy is kind of the only thing that we have going for us. We get an extra diplomat. We get plus two diplo relations, right? And we get plus one monarch diplo points. So, vassals. Right? Vassals. That's going to be our bread and butter. That's going to be what we have to go for. Because we simply are not going to have the admin points to take everything. We're just not. The only all power, or the only, sorry, the only core creation cost that we're going to get is from admin ideas. So we can't core the whole world on our own. It's not going to work. We simply will not have enough admin points. There's too much development. Uh, we can expire to reduce Empire AE. Yes, but remember that the spy network only reduces AE against the person that the spy network is built on, right? So if I don't want Wex to get a lot of aggressive expansion, I need to build a spy network on Wex. It can't be on the person we're going after. Uh, yes, the old power cost does, in fact, affect the core cost which is part of the plan <sighs> vassals okay now just to be clear uh we start off as a republic specifically we start off as a free city we're an opm right we're going from from one province i believe we're like 16 development to own the world now the free city reform gives us like dev cost an extra diplo slot, but doesn't matter. We're gonna lose that pretty much immediately. We don't want to be a free city. In fact, I don't think we want to be a republic. Um, there is another thing that is actually good about Tellum, which is our starting ruler. Our starting ruler is actually cracked and one of the best rulers uh, in the game period. Well, at least in the beginning. We start off with a 666 that is a intricate web weaver. So that's 20% uh, spy network construction and embezzler. So 0 0.05 uh, corruption, right? Sucks that we're an embezzler, but it is what it is. Uh, but this right here is actually more deceptive than you think it is, because this is also 10% aggressive expansion impact uh, globally. But, you know, we'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but Republic. So we want to flip to a monarchy, I think. Specifically, we want to be a monarchy that has a parliament. Now, you can... Uh, that's not how you spell parliament. I don't care. Uh, you can get a parliament as a republic, for sure. But... The way that I want to do this is, see, this is where we kind of run into where I'm not sure exactly where we want to go with it. We can either not become emperor or we can become emperor. 
Now remember, we cannot form another tag, so we cannot form the EOA. That doesn't mean we can't revoke. It just means that we can't do the last reform. Now the question is, do I want to invest all of my... Do I want to invest all my time becoming the Emperor, or would I rather invest my time doing other things? I don't know. Both are very viable options. Don't be going for a waste of time. That's just not true. Being able to take most of Kanor with a couple of button clicks is absolutely worth it. Um, the question is, is it worth the time investment? I don't know. I don't know. But I do want to become a monarchy. Uh, personal unions. Uh, but more specifically, for the Tier 2 government reform. Uh, for the Tier 2 government reform, which is uh, empowering, empowering the mages. Right? Because we have minus 5% all power costs in our national ideas, which is a very strong modifier, we also get minus 2.5% all power costs from being human admin. Which means we have a casual minus 7.5% all power cost when we get through our third idea group. That's important to remember. Have to get through the third idea group in order to get that five, minus 5%. Five if we also stack up to minus 10% from our mages being very loyal and very influential, that's minus 20% all power cost. Oh, sorry, not minus 20. Minus 17.5% all power cost. Which is insanely strong. Insanely strong. Because we can stack all power costs, and then we can stack our Diplo annexation. So, uh, influence ideas gives minus 25% annex cost. We're just going to put it as AC. Minus 20% AC. Uh, just base. Influence plus quality gives minus 10%. Uh, AC. Influence plus... What's the other one? Admin. Gives minus 15% annexation cost. Yes? So, that gets us up to a base of 60 AC. 60. 60 annex cost reduction... From ideas, specifically. Yeah, let me make a new, new line here. Okay, sixty percent. But there's another modifier that you can get when you start in Kanor, and that's an additional minus fifteen percent from a certain deity, which is from Regent Court. What's her name? Uh, where are you, Esmariel? I don't know. It's whatever. You know what I get. It doesn't matter how it's spelled. So, we can get up to minus 75% all or Diplo annexation cost this way. Uh, yes, we can get an additional 5% from the Noble Integration, which gets us up to 80%. Minus, minus 5%. Not all power costs. That would be fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> that would be absolutely nuts. No. Another 15%. So we can get, with this, up to minus 80. And then, Parliament can give you minus 15%. If you choose the right Parliament uh, choice thing. Okay. Which gets us up to minus 95% annexation Cost reduction. Yes? So it, we get to the max annexation cost reduction fairly easily. You can't, if I, did I do, did I add 10%? Did I do a bad, bad math? 15, it's, that's 30. No. 15 and 15 is 30. 60 plus 30 is 90 plus 5, 95. That's not 60? Did I add something in here? That's 50? You're right. I'm dumb. I do mad math. I do very bad math. 50% here. Okay, that's 85%. So not quite max. But we're almost there. We're almost there. That's what, 90 then? 
No, 85. 85%. So we're close. Uh, APC also modifies and cost. Yes. So all power cost does not add, if I understand the wiki correctly, and what I've read, it does not add to the diplomatization cost. It's multiplicative. So it doesn't bring it up to 95. It just makes it, I don't know. I, this, this is the part I get a little confused about. But it's multiplicative if I'm understanding it correctly. So getting up to the, what I say, 17.5% seven, all power cost would make it incredibly, incredibly cheap to annex people. Uh, your epic base mission. Yeah, but I'm not going to count that because, you know, this is what we're going to get to by like the mid game, right? When we get our first three idea groups and we get everything in, we get our parliament as fast as possible, then we're in. Uh, so the minus thirty percent APC you have will turn to an effective minus ninety four percent. That's us. Yes. Then we kind of have to deal with the fact that we're not going to have a lot of diplo rep unless we become the emperor. If we become the emperor, then we get a lot of diplo rep from the reforms. What's this for? For the run that we're doing, which is Talon World Conquest. Okay, so feeding vassals uh, slash personal unions. I think is the only reasonable way we have to do this is tell them. It's the only benefit we have, which is the extra diplomat, the plus two diplo relations, and plus one monarch diplo, and all power cost. <laughs> yeah. Do you want reform progress or do you need to rush reforms? You see, that is the question. Because... We also have the chosen mechanics for our deity. Um, and we start off with the ability to choose Nathalane, because, uh, where is it? Where's our starting ruler? Right here. Uh, this spy network construction, the intricate web weaver, means that you can become a chosen of Nathalane, which means you get 10% aggressive expansion cost reduction, which is super nice in the early game. But I don't know what the rest of them are is the problem if there's one that does give either diplo rep or uh diplo annexation cost reductions that would be great um, because when you get your chosen modifier it's until that ruler dies now one thing that we can't do by going through this is we can't become a witch king because we can't have the minus six diplo rep unless we can really offset it. But even then, it probably would not be worth it to do so. Which kind of sucks. Because that would be the best way to ensure that we always have the all power cost. Because keep in mind, if we do get a ruler that is a mage and is legendary in divination, which is a lot of things, right? We can get an additional minus, I think it's like minus 43 percent all power cost reduction for like a very small amount of time but it can be used to annex a bunch of tags at once okay and that's another reason why we want to go monarchy we want to try and fish using money and high mage influence and the other kind of mechanics um to get powerful mage leaders that does mean that we probably want to fish for switching our dynasty over to uh, one of the silver families, but that's a whole thing that I don't know if it's really a realistic thing to try and do. Um, no, I'm not using Monuments Mod. It's just Ambinar. Uh, yeah, the Monuments the monuments would just completely invalidate the whole run. Because, <laughs> yeah, the Monuments are not balanced at all. They're fun, but they're not balanced, and uh, it wouldn't count for myself. The silver family has a higher chance of getting powerful mage leaders. That's just it. They have a higher chance than other people do. Now, I looked around at changing our country's military or admin. I don't think there's a good choice for admin. Um, the only person I saw that I might have wanted to change it to would be Haramari because they get 5% admin efficiency. But it's not super realistic to make a plan to flip Haramari. They're on the other side of the planet. And we have a lot to do on this side of the planet. And I just don't think it's a very reasonable idea. Um, 
Yeah, I just don't think it's a very reasonable idea. Why not Elven Abin? Let me look ahead. Let me go ahead and look at Elven Abin. Here. I'll bring this next over. I have a save, a 1444 save. See? Let me... So. We'll just load that back up. We can switch over to uh, Ivabar here real quick. Brain. Brain, no work. Okay, Elven Admin. Uh, gives plus one Diplo rep, which is pretty good. 10% national tax, 10% production efficiency, minus 1% prestige decay, plus 25% improved relations. Uh, we get minus 40% global settler increase, plus 5% tech cost, plus 33% institution embracement cost, and minus 33% institution spread. So the question is, is that plus one Diplo rep and the improved relations worth minus 2.5% all power cost? Because that's the, that's the trade-off. And I don't know. Number one, we would have to get from Talum into Ibavar. Most likely. Because uh, the other elves are in Moonhaven and that would be a lot harder to do. And then we would have to flip admin. Uh, on top of that, that also means that we would be switching out of our culture group, which kind of sucks, because the elven culture group kind of sucks, because it's super spread out, which is not great. So I think we, I think staying human is probably the, the better option. Uh, also, any of the early game expansion we do of things that we're going to want a full state, which is not many, we're going to be half stating a lot, is going to be in this culture, and that's going to give us more manpower. So I don't think it's really worth it to flip to Elven. Uh, but if we look... I mean, yeah, the game's going to crash, and I'm going to have to re reload the game. Uh, tag R50. Look at Haramari. They have the 5% admin efficiency and plus 100% vassal force limit. Uh, at the cost of less ship trade power, more elite corruption, less institution spread, and increased tech cost. They also have cheaper idea cost, uh, plus one maximum cultures. Harmari admin is very good, uh, but it's just so far. It's just so far. Um, like, we have to get across all of Bulwar to even get over there. Like, it's... It's not realistic, especially because we're going to have to do some shenanigans, okay? Back to the blackboard class. <sighs> we're we're going to have to do some shenanigans. Uh, Lex Noctis, hello. Uh, we are plan We're kind of going over the plan for my Telem World Conquest. Okay, so we kind of left off here on not becoming Emperor or becoming Emperor. I mean, if we can become the Emperor... We take it. There's really no downside to becoming Emperor. At least not until the League War. Um, which we may solve that problem with the next part. Which is... Eskin. Yeah, we love Eskin. Two reasons we need to keep in mind. Eskin and Bulwar. Alright, Bulwar. Trade company equal money. We're going to trade company Bulwar. And we're going to get a hell of a lot of money out of it. That is the... The one and only thing we'll be doing with Bulwar, we will not be stating it. We will be adding them to trade companies to get the monies. That is how we're going to fund our conquest up until the mid-game. Um, now, obviously, the earlier we can get into Bulwar, the better. If the goblins are still around, we can take that land for basically free. Uh, like, no aggressive expansion. No one's going to really care. And that's great. There's also... Gold. <laughs> gold mine in Bahar. There are two gold mines in Bahar. Those we would state. So two states for the gold mines and the rest will become trade companies. Uh, is National Idea Lock broken in game for you? Uh, no. No. I can see everything. No, that's good. <laughs> right? So that's that's the plan with Bulwar. Now, of course, there's a couple things to keep in mind with Bulwar. Uh, number one, we have elves. <laughs> elves are bad. 
right? Which is high AE. So at least in Bulwar proper, like that central part of Bulwar, it gets to pretty high development. The elves we match. So if we want to go into Bulwar, we kind of need to go all in. But we have Samartal, right? Once Samartal happens, we'll be able to attack the elves on their own without their homies joining in. Um, the only downside with this is that they could ally someone on the outside, such as Katarata or even Jad, and that could cause issues. But... Samartal would probably be the best time to go and take out, like, Brasardenshis and Varimhar and Irlium, at least. And try and get in there and make it work. <laughs> make it happen. Uh, which means we don't really have a bunch of time to get into Bulwar. We kind of got to get there. Uh, but we have a couple decades to make it work. Do we snap any regions? No. Uh, at least aborting the deep woods for Fog of War expansion. Yes. So, the run is going to be very much... We're not going to have a lot of full states. Half states and trade companies are going to be our bread and butter. That is going to be the way that we work. Because we are not going to have the governing capacity to full state everything. It's just simply not possible. Eskin. So, Wars of Consolidation. That is the key, I think, to our run. Winning the Wars of Consolidation gives you a couple of options. Number one, you can form Castanor. We're not going to form Castanor because we're not allowed to. Number two, you can get a CB to take the Emperor ship. Fine, which is just pretty good. Uh, and number three, the one that we're going to care about. Well, actually, I guess number three, there's one that gives you dev cost and construction cost reductions. Number four, you get... You get war score cost reduction and core creation cost reduction. I think it's like 20% CCR and is it 15% uh, province cost reduction? It's something like that. I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh, is it 15% uh, CCR? It's something like this. It's right around here. It's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, which, obviously, we want. If we're going to do World Conquest, having Province War Score cost and Core Creation cost reduction, no matter how much it is, even if it's like 1%, is still worth it. Uh, but that does mean that, number one, we need our capital in Eskin. Number two, we have to be... Actually, I guess you... Do you only have to be an Eskin culture... I guess that's part of the little fuzzy on. Uh, Nord, yes, thank you for the sub. Appreciate that. Very kind of you. <laughs> do you need to be an Eskin culture to win the Wars of Consolidation, or do you only need your capital? In Eskin culture and in Eskin for our call. That's what I'm thinking in the back of my mind, so I'm going to have to assume that that's correct. Which means we have to culture swap over to an Eskin culture, which doesn't appear for a while. You have to wait for the event to fire to have the Eskin cultures created. But that's not a big deal. As long as we're not full state and everything, it's going to be fairly easy to move our capital, culture swap, no problems. The question is, when, when to go into Eskin? There are two options. Number one, early. You go in early. And you take out the orcs before, or at least close to, when Coronite spawns. That way, you get less aggressive expansion. Right? No one's going to really care if you conquer, like, Dukin orcs. No one cares. Except for themselves. They'll all be allied, but it is what it is. Or, number two, you go in later, and then you get uh, the special CB to take provinces for cheaper. Okay? Yeah, when the Wars of Consolidation start, you get the Wars of Consolidation CB, which makes it cheaper to take land, and I think less AE as well. Uh, but, the trade-off of that is that there's more development in Eskin, and the tags there are much stronger than they are in the early game. Uh, once the adventurers lose their adventurer status, they become pretty weak and pretty conquerable. 
Um, but, and they're also by that point probably all Core Knight, which means you have to deal with the aggressive expansion of attacking into the same cult or the same religious group, and that's going to be a lot of pain, and that might not be great. Might get coalition for that. So, I don't know, because if we also want to go into Bulwar, right, we want to go into Bulwar for Samartal, which is within the first 50 years, we really want to focus on Bulwar, but at the same time, it's definitely more valuable to take Eskin earlier. It's easier, there's less punishment for it, but it would sacrifice conquering Bulwar. Now, what is the trade-off of maybe conquering Bulwar later and going for Eskin first? Well, number one, you can't really get into Eskin until like 1500 because you can't see it, okay? So you have the first like 50 years to do whatever you want before Eskin is available and you can go in. Sure, you can probably steal maps off of some people, uh, when you get to tech six for Diplo and that way you can get in there, which is also a decent idea But I'm not sure I really want to do that that requires getting up to a spine network of 50 Which may take a while which is a diplomat that I could be doing other things with um, And on top of that then you don't know like what people look like and if you go in early then they're still adventurers which means they have an inflated like force limit and so it's really just a bad idea to go into Eskin before 1500 so can I conquer Bulwar in 50 years no I don't think I can not reasonably can I conquer some of Bulwar in 50 years yes yes Question is how much? I don't know. Uh, Intro night. Thank you for the four months. Uh, World Monument showcase for YouTube. Show where the monument is. What does the lore blurb? If you if I do it, you'll give twenty five subs. That's you know tempting, tempting. The problem is there's not like a whole bunch of uh, monuments in Aminar, but I mean it's not a bad idea for a video to be honest. Not a bad idea at all. We'll see. Uh, now, the Worthy Consolidation don't show up until Absolutism, uh, which is what, 1650-ish? Uh, it's more like 1660-ish? Uh, you need the 10 years for everything to happen. But by 1660, I can definitely own all of Bulwar, and I uh, should own all of Bulwar by that point, because uh, that's the only way we're going to have money. Loads of new monuments are on the way. Oh, cool. Uh, and that is another thing we can talk about is the monuments that we need to use for the run. There's not many, but there are a couple that I saw that, I mean, they could be useful. Uh, Filthy Kitty, thank you for the five months. I do appreciate that. Going to the Deepwoods early for another trade company region. True. The only problem is all the elves are allied to each other. So I'd have to fight all of the Deepwoods in order to get a foothold in the Deepwoods. Which doesn't really sound that great. But maybe. You never know. Okay, let's look at these these monuments real quick. No, 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 no. There we go. See it? Yes. Okay. We're going for the past two weeks. This has been something I've been working on for a while. For a while. Uh, monument time. Okay. Lots of monuments. Most of these are bad. <laughs> They're just bad. Uh. The one Sagamber, Eskandar, is damn near useless. Globally, it's 0.5 prestige. We don't care about this one at all. Literally zero interest. Bal Hill, uh, globally, gives 0.5 yearly prestige. Useless. Don't care. Uh, the Necropolis, actually useful. Minus 15% stab cost at level 3, plus 1 missionaries, plus 3% missionary strength, minus 0 0.05 monthly autonomy change. This is a monument that we're definitely going to want to get. We're still going to go, like, tolerance ideas, but that's what we're going to get. Uh, Bal Dostin gives yearly absolutism 0.5. So eventually, it'll be useful. Uh, absolutism 1612, which I'll trigger in 1612. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. So that eventually will be good. Uh, Bal Ord, also very good. At level 3, gives plus 15% manpower cover speed near the army tradition and the yearly prestige. At level 1, gives 5% manpower cover speed, which is nothing to turn your nose at. Uh, but you do have to invest a lot of money to get it there. You have to spend, I think it's 250? 150 or 250 gold to 
get it fixed, and then you have to spend the money to actually upgrade it. So kind of kind of expensive. Uh, Kalos Gandar, just prestige, useless. Uh, I honestly don't know. Oh, Norse Citadel. Doesn't that give... Uh, doesn't that give... Colonize... E4, four score cost reduction? Hey! Oh, I put a W in there. Uh, use governing capacity. Governing capacity, 15%. Vassal Force Summit, plus 50%. Any of the prestige. So North Citadel, definitely one that we're going to want to have. That is also pretty good. Open list of monuments in the ledger, because I'm lazy and I don't want to. Uh, I got to do this one, too. Colonize 229. <laughs> the Haramari are colonizing in Kanwar. Uh, it's... No, I clicked the wrong one. Uh, this one gives 0.5 yearly prestige and minus 25% fort maintenance on board with rival. Also another one that we don't care about. Uh, Valvorin gives garrison size and cheaper leader cost. Nice, but probably not worth the money. If I had to be honest. Uh, Valvertesque gives 15% spy network construction. Could stack very nicely with what we have, but also not as necessary because we're already so much. Um, so we'll see. Uh, the Jerkowitz, thank you for the 21 months, 1444, yippee, that's right, everyone's favorite year. Uh, the National Unrest is nice too, yes, so minus one National Unrest is very good for when you're conquering a lot. And then we have Alkender, which is just 0.5 yearly prestige, we don't care about that. Uh, if we look at the Bulwar monuments, you have to be Harpy for this one. Look down here, we have to be Keteradin for that one. Uh, this, we have to be Truinic Centaur Ogre, and the rest of these are not really going to be all that applicable, I don't think. Uh, except, I guess Hero's Gate, sure. Unlock some Merc Companies, which we don't really care about. So we've got a couple of things in here that we can actually use. Uh, one, two, like three, four. Four monuments that may actually be useful. I don't think it's really going to shape how we do the run, but it is just something to keep in mind. There is something to sink our money into when we eventually hit that point where we have unlimited monies. Uh, the only truly needed monument is the Kobold Horde. True, 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 true. Uh, so, I guess it only kind of leaves us with, like, yeah, this is great. Uh, we can talk about the ideas that we want to take later on. Like, we're going to want tolerance, probably. We're probably going to want quantity. But that's, like, late game stuff. We're not even close to there. So, we, it just kind of brings us back to this monarchy uh, idea. The monarchy parliament. Which means we want to become a monarchy as fast as possible. But becoming a monarchy reduces or sorry, lengthens the amount of time it will take to become a parliament. Because technically you can become a parliament as a republic, but we want to be a monarchy for the personal unions and so we can get a powerful mage ruler. Yes? So that just means that we need to re-elect people over and over and over again to become a dictatorship and that way we can eventually become a monarchy. Uh, now, when we flip from a free city we're going to become an oligarchy which honestly kind of sucks oligarchies are kind of bad compared to the other kinds but it would cost government reform progress to switch and i don't really think that's worth it because again we want to become a parliament as soon as possible one of the things that's going to complicate that is that we're not going to have full states which means our government reform progress is going to be very slow because yes republics are good for government reform progress but that's only if you have high republican tradition so when we're tanking our tradition to become a monarchy, we're not going to get the benefits of being a republic. So it kind of sucks. But I do think it's for the best. It also allows us to get more absolutism, which we're going to need uh, for sure. We're going to want 100 map absolutism. Uh, yeah, royal marriage is good for vassals, and they allow you to get PUs. So that's kind of the plan. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. We start off. We re-elect as often as possible, as fast as possible. We don't want any Republican tradition gains. We become a market as fast as possible. We get into Bulwar as soon as possible. We get a foothold in Eskin, and then we kind of see where we go from there. That's the basic plan. Admin for CCR and Diplo for Promise Wars Request. Yes, we're going to want Diplo ideas probably, but taking influence first is what we're going to do. Influence ideas first, without a doubt. Because having just three ideas and influence and Esmariel 
gives us math, 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 40%. 40% uh, annexation cost reduction, which is huge for the early game. Throw in an initial 5% from noble integration, that's 45. Right? Very, very good. Very, very good. Feels like Legendary Ryuki, One Faith, Wokong, Vanilla. I would say this is going to be harder than that. <laughs> this is, this is going to be harder than that. There are some things that are easier, and there are some things that are harder. Uh, yeah. That's, that's the plan, folks. That's what we've got. So thank you for listening to me ramble for like 45 minutes on what the plan is. Uh, let me restart the game here. Because we did all of our looking around shenanigans. And so it's probably going to be all broken and crashy. Uh, but yeah, that that's, that's the plan. There are other ways you could probably go about it. You can play as a release vassal. So you can... Like, become a horde, but that kind of feels like it defeats the purpose. If I want to do a horde world conquest, I just play centaurs, right? I, I just play centaurs. Uh, but vassals, I think, are our only option. Odds of getting the first try? Um, nothing's impossible, right? But it definitely is not likely. <laughs> this is probably one of the hardest achievements that they added. Uh,. Probably is the hardest. I, I don't know of any other ones that could possibly get to that level. I'm like trying to think. I mean, the Phoenix Empire one was difficult. Is it a hard achievement? Which one? I mean, like, it. this is hard, but once you get to the point, like once you reach the breaking point, then it's just like doing a regular World Conquest and Ambonar, right? One one one. Oh yeah, no, that's true. True. One 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 is the hardest. Where you have to do a one tag, one faith, one culture. <laughs> no thanks. Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound uh, good. That sounds terrible, and that sounds like a job for the centaurs. If I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a centaur run. <laughs> Uh, what was save Jad run, right? No, because you have to do a one culture. So you can't play as Jad. So you need to do a one culture, and Jad does not culture convert. Castar's culture conversion stuff would be easier for 111. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Are you eating anyone? No. So we're going to want to make sure that we're accepting as many races as possible. Mostly for the unrest reduction. Right? If they're... Well, obviously, if they're oppressed, they're not going to be very happy. So, I didn't want that. <laughs> yeah, and you can't form Castor until 1600. And by the 1600s, it's centaurs, you can own, you know, like three continents. Which is pretty good. Uh, by the way, we are playing on normal. We are not playing with Great Conquerors because we don't need to. <laughs> we don't need Great Conquerors. Great Conquerors are not going to make this run more interesting. One tag, one faith, one race. Start as gnomes. Well, you have to do, like, Gibbard. Because these gnomes start off as uh, the thought. Okay. <laughs> 1444. 1444. 1444. Alright, so we have Lady Cryer, Tegan, Sil, Natil, a 666 Integrate Web Weaver, which is 30% Spy Network Construction, not 20. Uh, and Embezzler, 0 0.05 Yearly Corruption. She is 39 years old. She will be reelected in four years. If she dies too early, we restart. She needs to make it to at least 60 years old. So she needs to live for the next 20 ish years, and then it's fine. But she has to live for a while. Uh, in general, Amar, you just culture it with the tolerance mechanic. Yeah, but the centaurs, you also raise provinces, which makes it cheaper and faster. Uh, we are human admin, which gives minus 2.5% all power cost, minus 25% culture conversion cost. We have 5% morale of armies and navies. We start off with plus two diplo rep because we are an imperial free city, which we'll lose, and we're a member of the EOA, which we will keep, at least for a while. 
Uh, if we don't become emperor, we will probably leave the empire, but we'll see. We make 1.16 ducats. Not bad. We are tech three. We will be the first ones to reach tech four in the world. Probably. I'm not going to focus mill, I don't think, but we're going to get pretty close. We went over ideas. We start off with minus 10% dev cost and plus one diplomats. We only have the base <laughs> missions, which kind of sucks. Uh, they give us 5% morale of armies in the end of the game, I suppose, which is nice. We will not form Arnon. We will not purchase the electorate. We will not request the electorate either. We will not be expelling the mages, and I do not want state firearm regiments. <sighs> Nothing crazy here. Religion, we are Regent Court, which gives minus 15% stab cost plus 2 tolerance of heathens, which would stack very well with tolerance ideas. Uh, as for our starting deity, we are going to go for Nathalane. Uh, also, we're on the current version of the bit bucket, which is nice. And on top of that, it tells you which personalities are aligned, which is great because there was no other way to tell before, and that kind of sucked. But now we're good. We can know. Tag switching is not allowed. No tag switching, no colonies, no vassals, no nothing. All tell them, which does mean we have to move our capital to the new world, but it's not actually that difficult. Uh, you just move it to one of these islands, and then you can move it over, which is fine. Uh, but Nathaline is connected with Intricate Web Weaver, so we'll get an additional 25% Spy Network construction and 10% Siege ability. So we'll go ahead and click that for now. Uh, military start with five troops. Wow, five troops. And estates. How do we want to go about doing these states? I don't necessarily need to sell titles. I know. Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this guy? Poimu? He's not Poimu. He's the same. He doesn't want to sell titles. Um, we take the monthly mill. Question is, do we take monthly Diplo? Do we take monthly admin? Do we take both of those things? Uh, I would like to give the mages patronage of the magical arts to get their influence and loyalty up a little bit more. We'll see. State satchel rights is a good call. Maybe. So, upside of the state statutory rights, I get 30% crown land back. Downside, it's given to the merchants. Now, when we flip out of a republic, that's not a big deal. But until we flip out of a republic, we would not be able to get rid of estate statutory rights. Because they're going to have too much influence. Because they're merchants in a republic. Um, we don't necessarily need to, though. Because we're an OPM, and I, I plan on annexing Celionde here, by the way. Not vassalizing, annexing. That way I can get a claim on Landshark. We'll get Crownland back. But obviously, we want to have the most amount of crown land possible, so that way I can get to the reform progress growth. But if I get to 30% crown land using the state's statutory rights, I can't seize land anymore. Which would kind of suck. And then, if my estates take some crown land when I conquer things and I go below 30 well, then it sucks that we're below 30 and there's nothing I can do about it until we get rid of state statutory rights. So I don't think I want it, to be honest. If I was planning on just sitting here as an OPM for a while, then maybe, but we're not. So I think we're not going to do it. Like We know our first idea group is going to be Diplo, but we need the admin to do the Diplo. So I think we take monthly admin points. Our loan size is currently eight. <laughs> so taking loans at this point would be very bad. So I think I do sell titles. Give the merchants a lot of land because they're so influential. Then seize immediately. And then I think we give it the mage's patronage. Dynastic rules are from the two royal marriage republics, right? Yeah, but dynastic rule also is kind of trash. <laughs> it's 
It's kind of trash because you can't do anything with those royal marriages. Uh, as for the clergy, I want to give them... Actually, let's do the nobles first. I want the nobles to get supremacy over the crown or over the council. Because I want everybody to get that influence, except the merchants, but it is what it is. Um, gets the nobles up to 41%. We'll give them right of council. Gets them to 51, and then I think I give them officer rights. For the general. That's all I want to give the nobles. The clergy, I want the clergy to have religious diplomats. And probably oversight. Now they do have a reform progress one, don't they? Hmm. Yeah. Reform progress that scales off of loyalty and influence. But odds are they're not going to be very loyal. Which means I would actually lose reform progress growth. So I don't think I want to do that. Uh, merchants, we want to give the least amount as possible. Because they're already super influential. I mean, we're going to flip off a republic. So eventually it'll be fine. But for right now, it kind of sucks. Whatever we give them is kind of permanent. Uh, which means we probably don't give them merchant guilds bookkeeping, which kind of sucks, but our state maintenance isn't a problem, and hopefully we're not taking loans. Or at least not too many. We play this right. So, that should be fine. So I guess I just give them free enterprise. And we just kind of leave it there. Like, I could give them patronage of the arts, but tax is kind of our entire income right now. So, losing that would feel kind of bad. About 15 prestige is 15 prestige. I think we'll hold off for now. Uh, and I can summon the diet as well. I don't see the harm in that. No, no. I can improve in the Magisterium. Okay. So, starting Diplomacy now. Actually, let's grab this General. That's... Bad. I'm gonna have to hire a General. Okay, I'm not gonna turn my leader into a General. Also, we can't, because it's a woman. Not based. No girl bosses allowed. So who wants to ally me? Not many people. Arnon, funny, funny for Arnon to think that I'm gonna ally them. Uh, probably Bison. There are a couple of people around here that we'd want to ally. Stalin has a powerful mage ruler, so they would be a pretty good option. They're also not rivaled to Bison, which sometimes happens. So we could look at them. Eight thousand troops. Also, they start. Ooh, that's random. They don't always start the powerful mage. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Alabasan. And now, hopefully, that means that we can call them into some wars. We do want to kill Arnadin sooner rather than later. Uh, but who are they friendly with? Yeah, they're friendly with Ashenyande, so they're probably going to get that alliance. We just have to hope that. Other people don't ally them. We'll see though. Now, Celiande, and the reason why I've chosen this start date. Is because they start off rivaled to Arnon. If they do not start off rivaled to Arnon, they will ally Arnon. And that's bad. You can win the war, but it makes it a huge pain in the ass to do so. Huge pain in the ass. Now, Celiande does start off with a royal marriage with Pearl's Edge, which means there is a chance that they will ally. Uh, not the end of the world, though. Pearl's Edge is very far away. 
Uh, worst case scenario would be like Busilar, Vern, or Eberthil. Move man. Uh, another thing to keep in mind Eberthil. I don't know why it's the Eberthil. <laughs> Eberthil early on is going to get claims on a lot of islands over here. And if they see an opportunity, they will go and grab them. So we kind of want to be over here and taking these islands before Eberthil jumps over. Because we're not going to beat Eberthil's navy for, oh, I don't know, uh, ever. So we kind of want to avoid that. Kind of want to avoid that. But we're going to start building a spy network on Celionde. Now, who's rivaled me? Just Gizden. I'd be fine with the Gizden Celionde alliance. So let's rival both of them. And hopefully that will encourage them to ally each other. Let's speed three. Uh, for now, we're just going to, I guess, hire a general. Yeah, who wants to be a general? We've got one. We've got one. If this isn't good, we're going to have to just go back and restart because... Uh, three shock, at least. Without three shock, we're, we're in a bad spot. Okay. Nope. We're good. Zero, three, three, one. Good enough for me. Uh, stop paying for the troops. Uh, one thing we could do is do like a show strength war here, but I don't think that's worth it. I'd rather be able to get into land shark as soon as possible. Ask and you shall receive. That's right. Uh, we're not going to hire any advisors because we're going to go way over our force limit when we do declare war. Keep in mind that since we're a free city, we also have access to the Free City Adventurers, which is just a second Novice Adventurers, which is nice. Uh, I mean, they suck, but it's a second super cheap Merc Company. So, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I definitely want Imperial Reforms to happen. All we have to hear, yeah, we definitely want to become Emperor if we can. Okay. Well, let's let a day pass. Who can we ally now? We could be a bastard. Do you want this land? You do. I could ally Arnanin, promise them territory, and then not give them anything. And then immediately break my alliance with them. Let's do that. It also takes up another alliance slot, so they won't ally anyone else. Well, one less person. Okay. We can ally more people. Preferably, like, a Stalin. They're pretty close to allying me. Let's go ahead and start improving relations with them. And then... Yep, he will join if I promise territory. Beautiful. Okay. Well, let's see who he allies then. Uh, also, I want to know what Wex is up to. I want to know what Eberthil is up to. I want to know what Bersartan Chess is up to. And I want to know what Marblehead's up to. Let me know what Corvuria is up to, because I'd like to ally Corvuria sooner rather than later. Corvaria would be a very good alliance for fighting Arnanen. Uh, he's allied Gawed. That's less than stellar. Ooh, you got a Busalar. That's rough. Not the end of the world, but rough. Well, Yonde, nothing crazy there. We allied Indleberry. That's nice. Now, keep in mind as well, Sagamber's going to have a civil war early on. So we might be able to take advantage of that and go after them. Oh, also, I'm going to expand infrastructure in my capital here immediately. Let's start with halflings and gnomes. 
Uh, yes, and I need to not forget. Yeah, see, that is the unfortunate thing. And what's unfortunate about this is they start off with like a six shock leader. But if I have Arnon on my side as well, I'm not as worried about it. Let's try to the Magisterium. Are you going to do Tell him Great Shaz? What's the achievement? No. <laughs> no, I am not. <laughs> I have enough problems to worry about. I am definitely not flipping to a Nolish religion to conquer the world. Uh-uh. Not if I don't have to. Uh, Tenth Pantheonic Castle. We're not going to be reading everything in this run. Uh, but essentially, Corin is here. I will not be switching to Corin. Now, there is an argument to be made that in the late game, I stopped using vassals and I focus more on conquering everything myself. That might be a restart. I mean, I suppose I could go after Sagamber first. Just to build up my my power base that way. But that is that is super rough that he got Everthil and Vern as allies. There's no one I can release here as vassals either. Well, I mean, maybe. Xanzer Bexis gets annexed. I would need to stop improving relations with someone. Okay, he's not going to be interested in an alliance. Are you starting to try to ally? No, they're not willing to ally me early game. They, they don't like me. Well, it's not that they don't like me. They just don't like me. <laughs> this is Bitbucket, yes. I mean, we can't just wait for the plan to go perfectly every time, right? Otherwise, we'll be here literally forever waiting for things. So maybe we just switch over to fighting Sagamber. I can still promise Arden in land. I can promise Bassan land. I can actually give Bassan their land. It's two cores. Now that I was going to trade with Everthill. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do that, like, all the time. Yeah, start building a spy network here. Also, we can switch this merchant over to hostile trading to get an additional 25% spy network construction, maybe? And in 1445, we're getting 2.7 spy network construction. Casual. Go ahead and rival you. We're getting three on Sigamber. Importing iron, uh, mercantilism, or the 60 mil points? I think we take the 60 mil. That at least pays for the general we hired. Anyone ever thought? Yeah, having Everthill in there is rough. But, like, it's just the numbers that Everthill will bring in. Because Deshaq will also bring their guys across. But Everthill's going to go to war with <laughs> with Viacock pretty early, probably. So, remember, we also need 30 uh, Spy Network to make a claim. Is this Bivite with a new North Alaska tax? Oh, yes, it is. The valley is in. The valley will be conquered, as all things are. As all things must be. Did Jad win? Uh, yes, he did. Honestly, unfortunate. We prefer Zaka to win, but it is what it is. The valley is a lie. The valley is not a lie. It's real. It's real. Also, we'd like to ally the Emperor if we can, but it might take a while. So, what to take from Sagamber is going to be my question. We may just want these two states gonna be a lot of AE no matter what we do. God, it's so unfortunate. 
Yeah, and they also bring in a lot of cavalry too, which is gonna hurt a lot. Wait till four hundred fifty then dev Renaissance to deck. Yeah, I mean that is an option, but I don't like I've tried it. We could develop Renaissance, we could get Facetine, it's very good. Or I can spend monarch points on teching up first because I have a six six six. And favored by the gods. There we go. Uh, I don't... Okay, so the options for Nathaline are plus one artillery level versus fort, which is useless for us currently. Uh, or minus 10% aggressive expansion impact for five years. So, I mean, we could wait five years for a war to get that aggressive expansion impact. But you didn't even ally like Gizden. What the heck? Uh, so I'll tell them to adventure and then do a welcome house, right? Because your capital will be an alien to you now. I mean, you can also just move your capital. It's also possible. You Valley Bustar. Yeah, I think Sagamber is going to be our, our best bet. But I, I just need to get a claim on Landshark. They have unfortunately allied Marblehead. I'm not too worried about it, though. I can beat the goblins. Not easy. Also, we are in speed three. Three, five, five years, tech him a deck. True, that is an option. We could just wait for tech four and then deck Heliande. Uh, but wouldn't it be better if I just went and conquered Sagamber? We can take some land. We can get a humiliate off, which will give us one of these bad boys. Um, give us some more control over our node, and it will weaken a uh, rival of ours. So let's make the claim here. Pull back. You next to Gamber lose free city? Yes, but we're going to lose free city no matter what. So don't really matter. Uh, I suppose I can throw down some embargoes on people. There we go. I want to save my prestige, though, if I can. I don't want to insult people. Kind of a waste. 2.99. It's pretty good. Okay, so now if I declare here... Promise Basan land? I mean, I could also promise... I mean, I could give Arnon in the land that I promised them. Make sure that they know that this is the stuff that I want. So I can mark this, and then Arnon will only want this province. And I could just give them Bardswood. Because the Emperor is going to demand it, and they're going to give it back to Sagamber, so it doesn't really matter. It is War Score that I'd have to give up, but... Uh, what do you want me to do? You know? Alright, let's hire the Free City Adventurers, because we're going to lose our Free City status. Starts off with 10,000, alright. We'll get our morale back, and then we'll go to war. We'll keep our spy network building just because a little bit of siege ability would be nice. Actually. No. Start improving with Wex. And probably Busilar as well. I could ally Busilar here. Let's do that. We have common rivals? We do. Okay, never mind. I will scornfully insult you then. Boom. Uh, hi. You should have never said to know, but the answer is it tolls for the. Oh no. <laughs> the bell, it tolls for me. Really?
There we go. Yes, I do want that alliance. Maybe we can somehow use that to attack Tornin without fighting Booslar. It also means that we have Sagambra completely surrounded. I do still want these provinces, though. I mean, I could call Booslar into this war, but the more people I promise territory, the more land I have to give them in the peace deal, so... Maybe not. All right. We can go speed four because I'm just going to wait for my morale to tick up here. Uh, we can be improving with Corvuria at the same time. No reason not to do that. Do not need state statutory rights. Thank you, though. All right. One more month, and I think we go in. The question is, what is he going to do? I don't know. I don't know where he's going to move to. He's got 8,000. I mean, they'll build more troops. Uh, build the force limit, 5% morale of armies, minus 5% land maintenance, no better time than the present. And pull back on you. And let's declare this war. Promise Bassan and Arnanen territory, absolutely. And let's go. There's that war wizard. Seven Shock is going to go and attack Indleberry. Looks like Sagamber is going to try to go to reinforce. Not sure how well it's going to go for them. I don't want to spread out too much here. In case he tries to walk back. Okay, it doesn't look like he is going to walk back. So let's... Uh, do a little bit of carpet sieging here. Okay, he starts sieging Basan's capital. That's fine. We are fine with that. There we go. That's occupied. Here comes Arnon's vassal. He will get this siege done before this siege is done. Uh, I do want to send my siege. And you don't want this, do you? Okay. So it doesn't really matter if they're the ones sieging it down. Let's grab this siege pip here. And we'll send 6,000 guys onto that siege. These 2,000, I guess you can walk here and loot a bit. Why did you not just continue to siege down Indleberry? I was kind of hoping to get Warrift out of them. Well, that's going to complicate things. If Bassan's capital gets taken, odds are he pieces out. Trade policy? Yes, thank you. And let's get back to improvement with Corvaria as well. What is he going to do? Can I walk over here? No, I cannot. If I got access through Busalar? No, I mean that I can't get over there. Well, that's just unfortunate reality of things, I suppose. Uh, we are staying same religion. Trustworthy allies, we'll hold off on that for now. We actually want the Diplo rep. Uh, let's send you onto here. Just in case he moves off this siege, I want to make sure that we continue to have it. Uh, wouldn't you want a piece out? It keeps the alliance, if I'm not wrong. We don't need to give land. True, but then I also lose the war wizard. But, I mean, it's not the end of the world. He could break the alliance, though, which would kind of suck. You think he's obviously just not enough men on mine. Maybe. Yeah, now it's 2,000. I probably could have pieced Indoberry out for, like, a white piece, but now it's too late. Do you need the war wizard at this point? Uh, there's never a problem with having a war wizard on your side of a war. <laughs> never a bad thing. Because there are other people that I need to fight, right? And if I do give him land in this war, I gain favors with him. Which means I could call him in to this war against people that outnumber me and have very good general. 
So, I mean, I definitely, I do want to give him his course back. I don't really care if he gets his course back. It's not land that I could take for a long time. Reasonably. Okay, he's going back to Indleberry. Okay. Magisterium improved with. I may just want to piece Indleberry out. Nope, he's not interested. Okay. Twenty-one percent. I can't even move over there yet. I would love it if he would. Yes, do that. You walk around. Because now we have that three siege general on this stack, on this siege. Anyway, the miracle superiority. See, how about you eat my nine shock pips? <laughs> yeah, your numbers mean nothing, bozo. Absolutely nothing. Access through Wex. Yeah, but... I want to get this each. Uh, Cruelty of Mercenaries. Do I want to lose 10 prestige or do I pay more money for my mercs? My mercs are dirt cheap right now. We pay more money for them. I don't know. Okay. You really should just, like, defend your capital. Like, if you're going to do these kind of fights, you really should just defend your capital. I'm just saying. How did... We are getting really lucky. Um, He will not give me access because I'm at war with an ally of his. Oh, he's, he's allied to Indleberry. Spiner for Siege. It's too late for Spiner for Siege. I do need to be using my Diplomat, though. Probably Sturande. I almost said Seliande. Which is not correct. 14%? Uh, it's worth a shot. They fail on another 42%. If you would just come back over here. would be good 42 percent wow <laughs> oh he's mad oh he's so mad right now holy cow he's mad he is seething he is seething right now oh he's so mad there was like four 42 percents in a row that he failed yeah and Passan just thrashed him because, you know, war wizard. Unfortunately, we can't wipe him. But that's fine. So I want this. You can have that. Turn those to Bisson. Like, sure, I could go take all this. Is that worth it, though? Probably not. I'd rather get a Humiliate off. What? Oh, uh, he wants an Old's Gate. Yeah. Butcher's Field. Uh-huh. Oh, he wants this, too. Yeah, I can give him that. Because, again, the Emperor's going to demand it, so he, odds are they just give it right back to Sagamber. They can go and deal with that. I don't care. Solves my problem, at least. Hopefully. As long as everybody's happy and they get favors from this, then we'll be good. So I take land inside my capital state. Also inside my current home trade node. And I could also leave Rinman out. It's 190 versus 247. Honestly, this is probably better. Like, sure, I don't get Rinman, but do I really care about taking Rinman? It's 15 development grain province. Like, ugh. yay, I guess, for us? It's not that great. Long chest doesn't drop too low. Yeah, but I want the favors. That's the thing. 
I do want the favors. New trade regions implemented. Yes, they are. So there's no longer one large dame's head. There is the BPEC node, the Vertesk node, and the Dame's Crown node. BPEC feeds into Dame's Crown, Vertesk feeds into Dame's Crown, and Dame's Crown feeds into the Anbancost node. Anbancost is the new end node. Ta-da! So now instead of these guys being rich, these guys will be rich. <laughs> the age of Westam and Istralore, I suppose. Uh, get that over to Bassan. And we can also take money from Erlium. That's not Erlium, that's Indleberry. More reps. We take money. We don't get much of it, but that's okay. And then I just end rivalries to farm a little bit of prestige. There we go. Bring you guys back. Uh, and then... Hmm... What? Hello? Oh, you want Eskandar now. Instead of this. Yeah, that's fine. Bruh. <laughs> he just wants the occupations, actually. <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't actually want it. He just wants to occupy it. He wants to feel like he was involved. Okay, sure, man. Sure. That's fine. Whatever. Whatever. That's just I don't I don't know AI being AI moment. It, it doesn't matter. He doesn't actually want it. He just wanted to occupy it. I guess I could have let him pay for the fort for the whole war. Uh, Arden gets this. Basan gets their cores. I get this land. I get, take a little bit of money. We're not over our aggressive expansion cap for a coalition. It only costs 190 admin points. Everybody's happy. Yippee! Uh, immediately flip you over to established communities. To make a little bit more cash money. Okay, all of you are going to get cored up. That's fantastic. And then I can betray Arnon in here. Now, Busalar, you... Hmm. If I call him Busalar to the war against Seliande... That would be pretty good. But I'm almost tech four. I'm gonna be tech four this year. Or this upcoming year. So I don't know if I really want to wait. It's only 0.16 a month. I mean, I could call him into the war after Tari started. It's not like that's illegal. Uh, what's their monarch mill? Who? Busalar? One. Seliande? One. Everthil? Four. Vern? Five. I can look at Vern's general, can't I? Can you? Maybe not. Maybe I'm going crazy. Not military leaders. Vern. They have a five shock general. Just something to keep in mind. A four five three two. So I will beat him to tech four, but he will catch up rather quickly. Uh, also, if I go to war before these are cored, I cannot keep coring them. Because they are cores of Celiandes. And Wex is going to demand unlawful territory from me. So. 
Do I want to wait until we're done with the cores to declare war on Seliande? Probably, because this war is going to take forever. Because we're not going to be able to piece Everthill out easily. So I think we're chilling. For two years? It gets rid of our tech four advantage, probably. Uh, you do a rival war while waiting. Not without fighting Ibavar and Corvuria. Which is an insane alliance for Gisden to get, but hey, you know what? It is what it is. I don't really want to fight either of those guys right now. I'm going to be honest. The, the reason why I'm hesitating is because if I'm going to attack these guys, I want to hire my other Merc stack. Because it was like 12. Yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know how they did it, but they did. I guess it's because they rival to Ash Yande, maybe? No. Nope, that's not it, because neither of them are... I don't know. I don't know. I think we're waiting. As bad as that feels. Now, Wex is going to demand unlawful territory. And I will, of course, tell them to fuck off. Uh, Alright, we are no longer a free city. We're now an oligarchy, which is minus 0.5 national unrest, 5% tax, 5% merchant guild loyalty, which sucks. It's very bad. Um, we don't want to switch to noble elite. There's no reason to switch. Just costs uh, go reform progress. And also, the longer we wait, the more likely it is that Bassan dies. Their ruler dies. But we'll see. What happens when they die? Just a, no, they've allied two republics. Okay. Okie dokie. Corvary is easy. Corvary is easy until they die and then they get a powerful mage leader. <laughs> and they're like, surprise! <laughs> Hello! It's me! Mr. Powerful Mage! And you're like, oh, yay! Great! Wonderful! Actually, I think I'm gonna pay for my troops. We're gonna drill. A little bit of army drill never hurt anybody. Just they're a little bit better. <clears throat> Getting the mercantilism. Uh, what do I want to do with this? We could build a spy network on Seliande to get faster siege. We could. My eye is like twitching out right now. Uh, we could improve with someone. Yeah, let's improve with our ally actually. Try and get them on our side here. Still over a force limit, but not a big deal. Now, yeah, two of these provinces are not in our culture group. Two of them are. So these two will core faster, which is nice, because those are actually the two cores of Seliande. Uh, we'll take Miltech 4. There's literally no reason not to take it. Again, you know, it's not going to get any cheaper. Probably the first people in the world to take it. Could upgrade Telum Center of Trade. We will not, though, because we're going to need to hire Mercs. Sabotage Empire. Preferably, we become the Emperor. In two months, we'll have our first election. We will, of course, re-elect. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we also have Sailors now. Huge. Massive. Once these are cored, we could start building boats if I really wanted to. Go ahead and keep. Ten Republican tradition gone. And we're just going to hopefully get this as low as possible, as fast as possible. So if we get events that will lower it, odds are we take the events that lower it. Which means we should keep our stab at like zero for a while. Very solid. Yeah, it's looking good so far. Gizden is the main character, actually. <laughs> if Alex the Gamber now. Not the strongest again forever, but like it's still, that's a pretty good alliance chain for little old Gizda. 
Uh, take Diplo early. We'll be a little bit behind on admin. Well, farther behind on admin than this, but that's okay. Uh, also, we cannot spawn Renaissance, which is why I'm not developing our province. Uh, you have to be in here. In one of these. The borders does not count, unfortunately, for Renaissance, as far as I remember. Uh, yeah, he's being Lentinor, Esmeria, Dames Ground, East or West Dames Head. So, preferably, <laughs> if, if the world's feeling real kind, it'd show up, like, right here. <laughs> right in here somewhere would be perfect. Knowing our luck, it's going to show up <laughs> in Duran. We'll see, though. Okay, there's the two cores that matter done. So let's stop drilling. Let's hire the novice adventurers. Go way over our force limit here. And let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, listen, two ducks a month now. Is what it is. If Busalar would join immediately, then I may be more willing to. not have to hire this stack, but they won't, so. Well, that was unexpected. Huh. It's unfortunate. Because now they won't join me, will they? Nope. Don't do this. On top of that, that also means that I can't seize land, which is what I wanted to do. Well, it's probably in my best interest then to go help them. Ugh, that's unfortunate. No, Busselar already declared. No, my plans! My plans! Did the AI not know that I had plans? I mean, I suppose this isn't terrible. That Bassan gets this land. There's the Renaissance. Oh, wow. It actually did spawn up here. That is... Best case scenario. Yeah, that's literally as close as it could get. Nice. Okay. Uh, we can even get the NO for the admin tech here. Ten days left. Nice. We're up to 12.1 NO. By 1450. Not bad. Uh, Merrick the Magical, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Now it really just comes down to how quickly is this war going to end? Because preferably we would already be at war here. I don't like how they're building more troops. <laughs> and everybody's at war with these guys now. We are losing like two ducats a month. Casual. Come on. Come on. Restart counter gaming? Uh, I wouldn't get. I'm not going to get too overconfident here. I'm going to grab that mercantilism. Sure, the institution spread would be nice, but it'll just spread naturally to us. Okay. There's the peace deal. Oh, I wish I could. How close are these cores? We're so close to allying him.
That would be so massive, because then he won't be requesting unlawful territory. Which would save us so many relations. Well, first of all... Do that. Do that. My allies should be ready now. But now I kind of want to wait for this to be done. Because then I can ally Wex. That's definitely worth waiting for. If we get down to minus 26 reasons. Oh, that's so good. Uh, Amulent Arch Thief. In her mortal life, Nathalene was often at odds with the powers that be, stealing wealth and secrets from powerful institutions to raise her own status. She pilfered the Eye of Shadow Sight from the halls of the Silmuna School of the Arts and Amicost, trained with assassins in Haless, made off of the King's Ransom from the vaults of Urkogulan. She moved across the world like a shadow, challenging the status quo and spitting in the fact of destiny. The, even when she collaborated with governments, such as her partnership with Eoriel during the Decade of Masks, she was only ever loyal to herself and her companions. Some would say that our emulation of Nathaline is not befitting of our dignity of a head of state, that by revering one of history's greatest rebels and criminals, we are casting doubt on the legitimacy of our rule and damaging the standing of our realm internationally. But though we might pore over intelligence reports and plot agent movements, this does not make us in any way worse than those who pretend to be more honorable. Nathalene was always a, pragmat a pragmatist, but prepared for betrayal and watching her targets for any advantage that might be gained. We are vigilant, always anticipating underhanded actions from our foes, and rarely caught off guard. They may say what they like. The Shadow Queen shows us the ways of scoundrels and rogues, and we can guard against them all the better as a result. After all, who knows what a spy looks like better than a spy master? Minus 10% aggressive expansion impact until the death of our current leader. Our ruler. It's going to help taking out Seliande without getting coalitioned by the Empire. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can even that out a bit. Is there any way to fix this minus 25 without breaking my alliance with Busalar? Royal Marriage Royal Republic. Like, hypothetically, I can ally Wex, then re-ally Booslar, because Booslar doesn't care. But... They have too many Diplo relations. Yeah, they're too busy being allied to Indleberry. <laughs> and Arn. I guess Arn must make sense, but Indleberry. Wow, huge ally. Dynastic rule? No. Uh, we can't even do dynastic rule. I don't even know where that is. We're just an oligarchy. I'm going to state this. We're not full stating. We're just half stating. <sighs> How do I do this? Is it worth the time and effort and energy? Because we're about to have Busalar on our side for this war. Long-term government is to be a monarchy with a parliament. Because eventually we're going to start vassalizing a lot of people. I don't think it's worth risking losing Busalar. You attack Krathenor? I'd rather attack Landshark. Krathenor means I have to fight Abdel Tungur and Nathalair, which honestly, attacking Nathalair is not terrible. Oh, wow. Ordia allied Rayuel. That's weird. It's usually Ordia, Krathenor, and Abdel Tungur allied together, and then Rayuel gets got. <sighs> we 
If they get rid of too many relations, then we'll be good. Start building a spy network here. For the thing. Be a great alliance, but I can't risk losing Busalar. I just can't. Alright, there's the favors. And I don't have to promise anyone anything. Set all of this is vital interest. And let's declare the war. Okay, so Vern is tech four. Everthil is not. My allies are all tech three. So Vern's gonna probably crush them pretty hard. Arden has pretenders, so they might not be too thrilled to be active participants in this. We'll see. Leave one troop behind and go fight here. Should be a pretty easy wipe. There we go. I sent the wrong stack off. I should have kept the mercs on there, but it's fine. Arnon is sieging it down. Doesn't really matter. Alright, so it's going to be our job to fight Vern, but I need my homies to join me. But if the homies join me, say, Bassan, and I can use their war wizard, then we'll be in a pretty good spot. So let's say you can attach to this stack. Oh, where are you going? No, don't get baited into going to find Neverthill. Don't do it. Just attach to me. Yes, we go contest this. Yes, follow, 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 follow. follow. I don't really want to go attack them in the mountains. If I'm going to be honest. Doesn't really feel like a great idea. Uh, we can do a first government reform. We don't want to take republicanism. We don't want the yearly republican tradition. So... I guess random candidate bonus? Yeah. Sure. Doesn't really matter. Do I have a favorite mission tree? Oh, I don't know. Difficult question. Difficult question. Uh, start building a spy network up on Lanchark. We're either going to need to kill Tornanin or become friends with Tornanin to get access. I don't know why you took that fight. I also, I don't want to leave these guys. Because the sooner we can get them full occupied, the sooner that they're more likely to just give up. We'll see how that goes. Make your money from looting. That's pretty good. What was it on the siege? Oh, yeah. Honestly, I didn't even realize he was following me. Gonna be straight up. I thought he was just ignoring me. Well, there we go. I, I don't know if they got there in time, but that works. Uh, Army of Sword and Cell. Army of Sword and Cell. Keep you equipped there. Alright, that is farmlands. I don't really want to fight that. Farmlands on my own. But if the homies join me. Which. They're not. This is Highlands that I'd have to go through. I could get access through Magdalene and go straight for Vern's capital. Wouldn't be the worst idea. If we get their capital, they'll peace out. It is a level 3 fort, though. So I would need the War Wizard to join me. And it would essentially be leaving Busalar to die. Not that I particularly care. Since they're kind of throwing. 
And by kind of throwing, I mean they are throwing. Oh my god, you're attacking into the hills? Okay. The question is, will my allies follow me up here to fight? No. They're just going to unsiege their own stuff. Now, Everthil's still tech 3, but... Vern is tech four. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, we're good. Yep. Uh, sorry, Everthil. You, you kind of done goofed on that one. I'm not sure exactly what your plan was, but it wasn't a good one. Uh, hello? Battle on the 22nd? Oh, no. Who goes first? We get there on the same day. I should be on speed three. We get there on the same day. If I get there first, that well, doesn't really matter. It's farmlands. Is he still tech three? He is still tech three. I do have less morale though, because we were just in a fight. No crossing penalty or anything. But we are thrashing his troops. Yeah, that's tech four tactics for you right there. Uh, how are the bells? They toll. The bells toll. Look how much navy they have. <laughs> uh, funny. Funny, funny, funny. So Arnon's gone for that. I say we go after Vern's capital. Merchants are suffering. Uh, get over it. Yo, pull you back, pull you back. Go back to improving relations with Lex. And good ally Corveria here. Oh, also, we don't need this anymore. We could switch Nathaline to literally any of the other ones. The siege ability is nice, but plus two diplo relations would be pretty good. Improved relations and aggressive expansion would be nice. Plus one monthly admin would be good as well. Jad one. Uh, I go for the Diplo relations. I can get more allies. Why is Exus dying? Oh, because they allied Ellison. Yeah. That was a dumb thing to do. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Uh, yeah, what about AE? Good question. Like, the thing is, I don't necessarily need to full annex this guy here. I just need Sword Cell. Want to? Yeah, but want and need are two very different things. <laughs> Goddess of lesser love. Damn. L. L. I'm gonna go for the Diplo Rap and Diplo Relations. Do I have that? No, I don't. Let me get access through you, please. The Goddess of Bonin. Yeah, I... Okay. A little bit of a crude way of putting it, but yes, that is what she is. <laughs> well, not Corrin. Uh, I don't need morale. I need more allies. I need to succeed, to live, to thrive. Everthil, you're dumb. <laughs> yep, 
yeah. I, I don't know what your plan is, man, but it's not a good one. Now, one of the benefits also is if I don't want to take absolutely everything. Are you still tech four or three? Yeah. Did you have a five shock general? Glad that two of my enemies have five shock generals. Lucky them. Which is going to prevent them from getting stacked. Never mind. L. Ooh, am I going to be able to get Vern out of the war here? That's a very solid maybe. It's a very, very solid maybe. If I walk under their capital... Like, I could peace out and just take the two provinces and we can move on with our lives. Which is somewhat tempting. Uh, Vern's on medium. Because preferably I would then break their alliances here. Actually, you can keep the Eberthel alliance. But like, if I can get another Humiliate off, that'd be nice, but... Everthel's never going to want to peace out. It's going to take me forever to get this level 3 siege done. So the question is, is it worth the time to siege it down? Because I could peace out right now and go to war with Marble, with Landshark and Marblehead. Ooh, Aska, everyone's going to die to Dartax? That's so good, actually. For Sergeant Schiss is only allied to Rayuel. Yeah, and you're also allied to Marblehead. I mean, I could roll through here right now with Tech 4. Well, these guys are up to three, but still. How much do I value breaking his alliance with Vern? I guess that's the question. Honestly, pretty heavily. Basan also just hired Mercs. Like, if I can get war reps off of Vern, that's going to be so incredibly valuable. That's going to be a lot of money for me. Uh, we're going to walk through the marsh. But I should consider building some boats. Really, I probably only want trade boats. Can't walk anywhere else. Son still tech three. And Vern's landing over here. Remember, Vern is tech four. He's currently sieging their capital. Is Bassan going to be brave enough to move in? No, they're not. So Celiande's capital is currently being sieged down. Son doesn't want to go in because they don't have tech 4. Valid. They would get clapped. Let's see what Vern's gonna do this. I do have rebels near my capital. Arnanen, you are also tech 3. Son's gonna fight the rebels. If Arnanen helps me out here. It's pretty sweet. Let's do with our rebels first. Whoa, hey Arnon. Hey, buddy. Can you go ahead and attach, please? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. He's not joining me. Okay, Bassan's making their way over now. Wex is re-elected. First reform is passed. Not bad. Uh, Dorak, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. 
Let's just immediately go fight these guys. So I can siege that on my own. Alright. Yep. And then we just go after you. Perfect. Then I can tell them to stop attaching. They can go wherever they want. I'm going to unsiege this. All we need is to take their capital, and it's money, money, money. Uh, have you seen switching to Harpy Admin for the Liberty Desire? Also, you could become Harpy Lin. Rename. I don't think I can become Harpy Lin. I think I have to be Tellum. It's pretty explicit, saying that it has to be owned by Tellum and is Tellum. Uh, also, no, because then I would have to culture swap to Harpy, and I don't want to culture swap to Harpy. I want to be human. Achievement doesn't count renames? Hmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Personal union? Ooh, that's bad. Ooh, that's bad. I was like, wait a second, how did Galen join? But they died. Can you personal union to Vern? And no one contested it either. Now he has an he has an overinflated size. He shouldn't actually have this large of a stack, but because he was a person knew when the war started, doesn't matter. Want war reps? I want you to break your alliance with Everthil and Celiande. How much would it be to be an asshole? I don't think it's really worth it. What I do think is worth it, though. He's trying to siege this down. Uh, he's going to come down and fight me. <laughs> Bozo. <laughs> you thought. You thought you'd walk through and attack me there. Oh, you dummy. I don't think so. I still don't think I'm going to be able to get any more occupations off, but that's fine. Oh. Okay. There we go. Breaks his alliance with Celiande and with Everthil. Gives me more apps and a bit of money. Beautiful. It's unfortunate that he got this. Personal union, though. But hey, can't win them all. Okay, if I did annex you, it's not worth it. Uh, I would like a humiliate. Would have to convince Everthil to leave the war, though, and that's just simply never going to happen. Like we're we're literally never going to be able to beat their ships, so we're going to have to let the humiliate go. Uh, give me war reps. Break your alliance with Everthil. Yeah, give me money then. No one really cares. It's just Celiande. Thank you very much. Immediately, I get a claim here. He is unfortunately tech three. Busalar would not currently join. How far away are they from joining? Minus nine. No, I think we just get access. You. Let's get all of our troops back. Let's start to core up those two provinces. We have our claim on Land Shark. Very good. Wex will ally me now. Uh, I think I break my alliance with Arnanin at this point. The only downside is if Arnanin occupies or starts colonizing this then I need access through Arnanin but Arnanin is a target for expansion here
is the thing. Um, how much money would you give me if I got favors? Ten? How many favors do I have? Six? Let's curry favors to ten and then break our alliance with him. I could curry favors with Wex. Yes. Don't really need to. Hassan, you still owe me big time. No great or mythical conquerors, no. Could ally Corvuria if I wanted to. That might make Wex a little upsetty spaghetti though. But I need to find a way to break him away from Gawed, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to fight him. And of course there is always waiting for like Laurent to declare war on Gawed and then fighting Corvaria, but Yeah, I don't know. Okay, which troops do you have? Eight and ten? Eighteen thousand? I could beat eighteen thousand. I'm gonna sword and sell and sword and sell. Okay. Yeah, no, no great conquerors or anything. Uh, not necessary. Would not add anything to the run. Uh, let's just take the tech. We can get. Let's go to Marion Longbowman. Recover our morale. And then go fight Landshark. So we have a two tech advantage over them, which is pretty nice. Uh, we're going to need access through Ordia, but I don't want it immediately. We're going to want to full annex him here. Then we're going to want to immediately go to war with Mountain Hugger. So I... Like, I'd like to break Marblehead's alliance with Mountain Hugger, but... <laughs> wow. I'd be sneezing. I'd be sneezing. transporter to yeah but like I can't defend my boats but I can build one torn it in once an alliance I don't want an alliance my guy in fact I'd like to kill you but people in the Empire would not be thrilled with that idea uh, but I do want to build a spy network to get a claim that I do want to do start walking these boots were in fact made for walking we have a solid 18.2 army tradition by the way uh, friends in low places I can spend money to get 40 spy network on Gizden or I could not and get diplo points oh woe is me what is the choice I make? Uh, we're not taking Diplotech. We will take Admin Tech, and then we'll take Inf Influence Ideas. I will import that iron, though. Do we want to hire another general? I think I do. All right, Brian. Let's see what you've got. So you're the next one on the list. Boom. Nice. Nice. Okay. Four shock. We're moving up in the world. Yes, you get the CJ. All right, declare war for this. I'm not gonna couple of that. That would be kind of useless. Don't actually want to take land from Marblehead at the moment. Leave two guys there. Move on to the next province. Two guys there. I'd really like to get to this island, but. 
These boats are going to make that damn near impossible. That certainly is one way to go about it that I did not consider. Huh. Weird. Okay. Halfling Food Festival. In my capital. More tax? More trade value? I don't think we make that money back. Yeah, I suppose that's one way to go about it. So let's walk back over and fight him. Guess I should have thought about that. But I mean, we're getting ticking war score, so I'm not all too concerned about it. When do you land? Soon enough. Wow. Barely not a 10 to 1. Did they really not go grab my capital? Ugh, that's annoying. They have a sick shock general? Sheesh! Why has everybody got such good generals this game? What the heck? Doesn't really matter, but like, still. Still a sick shock general at the end of the day. Okay. Now the problem is, I'm going to walk back over here, and he's just immediately going to land again. Uh, problem number two is, if I don't do this fast enough, their neighbors are going to declare war as well. And I need to take Matty Road, or however you say that. That way I can get aboard with Mountain Hugger. Go ahead and take admin. No, unfortunately, no, uh, you know. That unlocks our first idea group, which is going to be influence. And while I don't currently have any vassals, that is a-okay, because uh, we will eventually. Soon, TM, soon. Sure. Okay, all of you combine together. Walk back over here. I have one transport. Let's go. One transport acquired. We're starting chest declared war on the harpies. Okay. Again, I can't beat their navy. So I just get access through you. Okay. Also, let's request money from these guys. Ten ducats, and then we're going to break our alliance. Honestly, fine. It's not that I need this province, I just need a border with this guy. So, if he takes this province, it doesn't really matter. Also means that he broke his alliance. Cringe. Well, I wipe your army one time and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm not going to defend my ally. Okay. Oh, what does that mean for access? Okay, no access so far. I want to leave behind the Merc stack that... Jane. Oh, I should have lost Republic Tradition. I gotta be more patient. Gotta be more patient with my button clicks. There's still Tech 3. This is not the greatest fight of all time. Yep, there goes Ordia. So Ordia is going to be able to get this island, is what it is. Oh, but he's not at war with Marblehead. 
so he won't kill these troops. Well, that's unfortunate. Magical succession within the nobility. Uh, yeah, I don't want to weaken my magisters. I'm going to be honest with you. Relations with the Emperor does give me Diplo Rep for 15 years. And National Tax. I could get some dev cost reductions in the capital. And local dev cost. I probably want to save this, though. For, like, colonialism or something. Because it'll take colonialism a while to spread. We do also... We should be improving with the rent. Because this is the ultimate... Personal union target is Laurent. If we get Laurent as a PU, Kenor is a solved game. Um, but. <laughs> that means I have to get a personal union over Laurent. Let's start improving relations with him. And. Who do I want to improve relations with next? Probably like Leslampar. Someone over here to prevent aggressive expansion. Hmm, no. Take that back. Hey, what the heck? When I when I play Rayuel, nobody ever wants to ally me. But when the AI plays Rayuel, you know, it's Ardentius and Elizna. What the heck? Okay, that means I'm going to need to go to war with Ordia, who's currently only allied to Rayuel, so that is, in fact, our next target. And also will be our first vassal. So we're not going to core this stuff up. We're just going to have it, and then we're going to give it back to Ordia uh, after... I have Board Mountain Hugger as well. Skill issue, meat bag. <laughs> Damn, just sounding like the mutants from Fallout. Meat bag. You're a meat bag. I'm not a meat bag. You're a meat bag. Okay. Uh, let me pull this back. Can make that claim. They're gonna get annexed here. Give me your money. Give me your... Yeah, I don't care about your war reps. It does mean that I'll have to fight Mountain Hugger and Marblehead, but... Meh. Can only do so much, right? I don't have access to you anymore? Nope. He is not a happy camper with me. Uh, but that's fine. Could be lots of rebels, but I do need to move back and deal with this. I didn't ever break this alliance, did I? There we go. Okay, there's anti monstrous on Mountain Hugger. 21,000 is quite a bit more troops. I still have tech advantage, though. But I need to go back, deal with rebels, then I think I think I want to fight Ordia before I fight Mountain Hugger. Yeah. At least Landshark? No, because they'll be monstrous, I'll never be able to annex them. Uh, I am well aware that... Mountain Hugger has a gold mine. I am well aware. Mountain Hugger has one. Dartax now has one. And then there's some down here, but those are far away. Okay. Summon the diet. Seize the land. Fight the rebels. Then we need to fight these rebels. What do you want me to do? Claim on Akradil and Medirud. Uh, yeah, I don't hate that. But you give me 50 admin points. Just straight up for taking it. Hmm.
So my thought process is, I'm going to give this back to him because it's a core. Too many admin points. Okay. Let's build two more units. I want to deal with these rebels and then I want to go back and fight them. Them being Ordia and uh, really well. But unfortunately, none of the homies are going to want to join me. But I also don't need the homies. Well, it would be nice because this is a level 3 fort. Coastal fort, which I'm not really going to be able to do much about. And I only have one siege pit. So, that's not great. Okay, we're really hoping these guys spawn next month. <laughs> Please don't make me provoke. Please. You can't see the diet missions? Huh? Yeah, you can. Or is it just too small to read? Oh, my head was covering it. Oh. I was between getting claims on Acrid Till and Metarud. 50 Ammo points. Improving relations with Nimskod. Building a spy net. Or sorry, improving relations with Ibavar. And then he was building a spy network on someone. Please. It's either next month or we're going to provoke and we're going to move. Because we have our claim now. Sucks. It's a lot more manpower than I'd like to lose. We get two recovery ticks and then we'll move. That's going to complicate things. Uh, you give me access. It's another way around. Which means I should be improving with Arnon to make sure that they don't revoke that away from me. Because that would be bad. Bussar cancel their alliance? Uh, if I had 50 favors, maybe. But I do not have 50 favors. Any chance Laurent wants to ally me? <laughs> uh, funny joke, funny joke. Sometimes you just have a have to have a good laugh. Krathenor wants to ally me. Is there anything I can do with that? I don't think so. Get some galleys built. Worst case scenario is that Rayuel tries to do the landing thing that we just encountered. Yeah, we're definitely not doing that. This is not currently up. Send everybody on. Wall breach. We pray. We pray for the wall breach, chat. Okay? Pray to every god, specifically Ryala right now. We pray for the wall breach so I can assault. Marblehead declares war on Baharkand. Okay. Pray for the wall breach. Because he is going to land and there's nothing I can do about it. If I walk away from the siege, he's going to get all the garrison back. Uh, we're going to have to go deal with that, aren't we? I 
I suppose I could have allied Krathenor and then promised them land and gave them something to Ray Wells or just have them join. No, no one wants to join me. Okay, we're gonna go one more siege tick here. If we get a wall breach, great. If we don't, we have to go deal with Ray Well. Why does everybody have such good generals? What the heck? Five shock, three siege? What the frickity frack? We can go one more. I mean, is it worth losing my capital for this? Probably not. Um... Me a lot of war exhaustion if I lose my capital. High more mercs. I don't know if that's really worth it. Like, I don't even have merc companies that are large enough to do that. Is the thing. Go with 8k. Well, if I leave... I could just leave 8,000 behind and go fight. We wouldn't get siege progress, but he's not likely to attack them. Five shock. Go and bring our boys out. He's tech four, so we should win. There we go. The question is, how far does he retreat? All the way back to Sword and Cell. Unfortunate. So we got a morale tick. He's gonna get another morale tick. That's so infuriating. Okay, it didn't matter. Uh, yep, go ahead and shift consolidate these troops. Send you... I guess you stay. Get that on siege, and then we'll go back over here. Rayuel is not going to get decked, though. Not when they're allied to allies, no Bersartans, just and Dartax. Also, bad news. These guys are tech 4 now, and they outnumber me significantly. Oh, it's alright. Feels bad. Feels bad. But no one's going to want to join me in the war is the thing. That's not true. Busalar is very close to actually wanting to join. So let's curry some favors. If we can bring Busalar in, that would be huge. So the Ande is no longer a valid rival. Then revoke the embargo. Let's get you back over here. Very well, we'll rebuild and they'll re-land, but offense or defense? I don't like losing stab, but I do want that siege ability. I'm gonna stab up now, because it's only gonna get more expensive the farther our Republican tradition goes down. Okay, he wants to land there. That's fine. He's allowed to land there. That doesn't hurt me.
We do not want to gain Republican tradition. We want to lose it. As weird as that is. Feels bad. But it is the correct play. All right, back to sieging this down. Uh, prestige or 20% spy network construction. Yeah, I'll take that. Can also get our next idea, which is the minus 25% diplo annexation cost. On top of that, it gives us plus two diplo relations as well. So it's more allies that we could get. Damn. No six shock general for us, apparently. But once we get through this battle ord fort, then the rest of the war is pretty easy. It's just this fort is a pain in the ass to get through. Without naval supremacy, at least. Bozo. That's fine. He can land there. I don't care. Actually, I might care. If he sieges this down, then he's gonna... Destroy this. I could just send these troops around to deal with them. Not sure how well it's going to go, but we can try. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. The main problem is going to be that they have a much better general. And they're equal tech. Oh, I regret my decision immediately. We have lost our huge tech advantage. How close to tech six are we? Not super close. He got a morale tick? Are you serious? This Rayuel is the luckiest Rayuel to ever exist. Literally the luckiest Rayuel to ever exist. Call from Laurent. That's fine. When's this fight going to happen? The first of next month. Literally the luckiest Ray Welt ever exists. Which station do you want to hit Tech 6? All of them. Uh, specifically the goblins, probably. That costed a lot of... Fuck. This war has been very costly. I'm not happy about it. Not happy about how this war has gone. Freaking Ray Well getting... So many other uh, allies really complicates this for me. Okay. I'm gonna go over there. Oh, the prize big gold mine? Yeah, I know. No, the problem with this war is that it's. Uh... Dude, fuck off. Why? 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 I mean, I know why. It's because you're not in danger at all. Oh, that's another question. Is there any chance I can get access? There is, but I need to improve with the gabos. No! <sighs> she died. Rip. Okay, well... <laughs> What kind of a candidate do we want? Probably a Diplo candidate. <sighs> True, a relative would drop Republican tradition faster, but it also gives us a zero to one. <laughs> we definitely don't want that. Did you say research is until 60? Yeah, I know. But that sends us all the way back to the beginning of the year, and I'm not sure I want to do that. This has already been a pain in the ass. If we reset, we're going to have to redo all this jumping around again. Clear the, the answer is 1444. That's right. 1444, it's over, boys. Things didn't go perfectly. Gotta restart the run. That's just it. That's just how it goes. Oh, fuck you. Oh, 
Oh no, he's gonna keep running. These these rebels are gonna move all the way over there. Uh, let's move everybody in here. Yeah, there we go. At least we get a defensive forest fight now, and we have to fight him anyway. So, whatever. And I I can't stop the Rayuel dude because I need to recover these infantry. So that sucks. Please, can I have access? Please? Please. Because we have to get Rayuel out of this war as well. Why is that such a big meme? I don't know. Same reason for Ulm being a big meme. OPM. It sucks that we've lost our tech advantage, though. Uh, let's go for the Diplomat. Streamers hacking. Pre-recorded. <laughs> Pre-recorded moment. Powerful mage. Okay. What are they good at? Nothing. Nice. Uh, what deity do we want to go for now? Could go for Corin. Could go for the Dame for the idea cost reduction. Bega? For the reform progress growth? Also not a bad idea, I'll give you that. But the idea cost, you know? He's landed more troops. I fight, I hate. Dude, the AI is so fucking annoying sometimes. I think I go for the Dame. Also, my boats are dead. Glad I build boats. I, unfortunately... Have to send these guys back around. Uh, Yeti, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it. Welcome in, raiders. Welcome to hell. Uh, <laughs> welcome to our world conquest. Maybe, perhaps. We, you know, early stages of a world conquest. Testing out some stuff. Uh, but it's going well. Did I spell shout out right? I think I did. Yeah, look at that. I can spell things. I, I spell good. Uh, welcome in. How'd your stream go, Yeti? Hope it went well. What were you up to today? I'm just trying to deal with these guys that keep landing behind us. Because I have not been able to build a, a navy, so. They just keep doing this. This is so much war exhaustion. We're going to have to be at peace for probably a year or two after this. To have time to let it all die down. Oh, where are you going? Where are you going, bud? Oh, what's it? Oh, you mean you can't actually be my military? You just keep landing troops behind me when I'm busy doing other things? Oh, interesting, interesting, yeah. I'm sure that'd be very stressful for you. Stay in Bulwark, please. Stop walking into, or stop landing in my territory. But here's the problem. If I don't get access through this guy, uh, I can't get here. Now there are, there is one way to get access. I could just declare war. I don't think that's a good idea though. I could also wipe peace Rayuel out. They've broken their alliance with Bursart and Chiss. I 
have a feeling we're about to uh, take a long land from those gobos. Honestly, I'm not totally against just white piecing out. Pretty well. But they do need to get white pieced. They need to accept they want to be white pieced out. What are you good at? You're good at... You're talented in enchantment, conjuration, and illusion. Not bad. I could get 5% morale of armies. I'm going to charm diplomats for sure. For sure. I'm going to walk away and then Ray Wells is going to go land more troops. Mark my words. Marblehead declares war on Dartax. Well, that could solve my problems. Actually. It depends on if Mountain Hugger joins this war or not. Because now Rayuel can't just... walk away. Like, they've got to deal with Marblehead, too. Do you really think you can win? Yeah, you do think you can win. I don't know if they actually can, though. Do I want to give the Magisters 2% of land? I do. Minus five reasons to be in the war. Can I get access yet? No. We're almost there. We're getting close. Eight war exhaustion. What a joke. Build that cog. So we're going to have to unseach this. Mage influence can be your lifeline? Yes, it is. We're going to need just super mega crazy powerful mages. We're in, boys. It's not enough to get him to peace out, though. You think if I can access through here, I can finagle my way over? No. Uh, what I can do, though, is this. I can go and siege this now. While I have access. Why can't you make a war wizard? Oh, I could make a war wizard. I could do that. It sounds like a great way to have him die, though. He's 36. He's also not very good. Because he's only one mil. If I re-elect him once or twice, get him up to two or three mil, he will exponentially get better. The amount of pips that he gets. Okay, ready well... Well, now that I'm here, I might as well just siege down Rayuel, right? Uh, I am getting blockaded this whole time, though. We should also look at Ally and Elizana. Or Keterata, someone down here. Keterata, preferably, actually. Can I just get into a lich? No. No liches allowed. We're going to be using lots of vassals, so I can't use liches. Because you get minus six diplo rep. Did I not ever ally you? Nope. Like, I would like to break his alliance with Halizna. At the very least. Don't necessarily care about Dartax as much. But breaking Raywell's alliance with Lysna would be kind of huge. War Eps would be nice. We have a wall breach. Let's just send both mercs, because I'm going to want to get rid of some of these merc stacks here soon. Trade wars. Blech.
I should have gotten rid of this access. That was a mistake. Where are you gonna go now, bozo? What? Alright, I'm the bozo now. He got me there. Marblehead rents out troops from Mountain Hugger. Okay. Nope. What? Oh, he has access from the other war. Oh. Rat. I thought I had him there. Okay, Asga Sel Asga has fallen. Walk up to their capital. Start occupying it. Truce with Vern is up. I don't really want to fight Ordia's troops here if I don't have to. Rayuel, war reps. Uh, no. No greed. We need to get out of this war. There we go. So, two things we could do. Number one, we could just full annex them and then release them as a vassal. That will make them more loyal, but cost more aggressive expansion. So that's 36 AE. Number two, I just vassalize. Which it says is 42, but it, it's only 42 because he's still alive. So this gets torn into minus 63. This gets torn into minus 67. It's like three more aggressive expansion. It's literally three more aggressive expansion. Let's do this. No, keep that. If I could have gotten rid of his core here, I would have, but that's fine. So we take all that, and then we're going to go. We're going to release Ordia. There we go. And now they are a very loyal Ordia as well, which is good. Does mean I do have to fight these rebels. But it is what it is. Yes, I know that I released already with more land. That was always the goal. That's why I had not cored everything. This does need to be cored, though. Uh, and I will add this to a trade company as well. Now, I can seize land. Ooh, I get to choose my rivals. Probably... Oh, boy. What a question. Who do I want to rival? Rathenor? If I rival Krathenor, I can declare war on Abdel Tungur to take his stuff and then humiliate here. Um, why is Elizabeth's ships up here? Is your war with Busalar? Lucilar, what a stupid ass alliance. Come on, man. What, what the f Come on. Tornanin, also a pretty good choice for a uh, rival. Just because I'll probably eclipse them really quickly. Though it may make Busilar not want to be allied to me anymore. Nathalair would also be a okay choice, but I can't really get to their capital currently. Let's go Tornanen, I think. He will barely not join. I bet you if I increase my trust with him, 
he would break. Uh, but if I try and take him out now, I'm going to get a coalition formed against me. And specifically, Arnon will stop liking me, which we don't actually want. Uh, I can find ally copper tours and promise them the gold mine, but then immediately betray for extra allies. Maybe. I guess the question is, do I really need his help? What I need to do is embrace Renaissance. That's what I need to do. It's almost here. Let's improve with Arnonin. Go ahead and seize. Okay, that gets us up to 26. Wex offers knowledge sharing. We will accept that. Our capital is now growing... 2.78 a month. They're on advancement. Except to 3.39 a month. If I get up to 20 development, it would go up faster. But I don't... Necessarily want to develop. We do need to chill here for at least a little bit. Let this die down. We're going to have to buy this down, no matter what I do here. It's going to slow us down from this. It's rough. Rough, but that's just the way it is. Ah. Mountain Hugger now joins the war. I mean, Marblehead is winning. Pretty handily. That also means they're busy. Is the thing. And if they're busy, they can't really help their ally here. And the downside is Rayuel is now going to start occupying things. And this is good. It just means that they're all going to be fighting for longer, which only benefits me. It's a large Varmar. Is Karadir still alive? He is. That's unfortunate. Telerios is still alive, though he's about to die. Play the Inno. Uh, I don't really want the gnomes to leave, if I'm going to be honest. No. So Teleris is about to die, which means they're about to go into their first religious incident, which is good, because that will make sure that Samartal doesn't happen too quickly. Are you an OPM? Yes, you are an OPM. Kill him. That's just that's just a free province to get back to my vassal. Vern wants access. Siliande wants access. Yeah, that's fine. I don't actually mind them having access for that. They don't really need it, so there's no point in lowering our relations. Do I ally Corvary here? I think I do. Let's get our relations up higher. We could get Miltech here. I'm not going to, though. I want to get this institution first. It's going up pretty quickly. Hmm. Whoa, wait. That's different, isn't it? Didn't this used to all be the Arnon node? The Eberthal node goes all the way up here now? Well, 
that sucks. <laughs> That's not very good for us. It has been? I just don't realize it? Okay. Yeah, I really would like to get more control over this node. It's going to require upgrading our center of trade. Building a trade building here and taking Arnon in and doing the same thing. I guess I have to kill everything now. <laughs> yep, that's just the only option. Okay, give that to Ordia. It is their core. Money. Thank you. Uh, I want to save my money to embrace this institution, so I'm not going to upgrade anything. Uh, tell me, thank you for the 12 months. Appreciate it. Not giving up Amnari. We're going to see what this nation is about. Oh, this nation is about nothing. We don't have a mission tree. Uh, it's an achievement. Ambinar has achievements now, and the achievement is to own every province in the world as this tag. So we're gonna see how far we get. Uh, as for our tier three, I think we just go for frequent elections. That's gonna be the fastest way for us to get rid of our... Actually, technically speaking, the fastest way to get rid of our Republican tradition would be to formalize the right of re-election, force a re-election. That lowers our Republican tradition by a lot, doesn't it? These are good. Our ideas are not good. We do get all power cost. We do have some spy network construction. That's it. Free policies is good too. But like, useless, useless, useless. Fine. Let's go re-election then. Lose five Republican tradition. Re-election the same ruler will cost 50% Republican tradition. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, that was a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Something. There's our truce with those guys up. 3.39 a month. Let's do one point of military development here. my prestige 31 so I can't get faceting not yet anyways well makes my life easier he lost to Ray well yeah I'm not really sure what I was expecting here That was definitely a misplay. They should live now. That tech six feeling. It's also just mercs. Mercs that I want to fire soon anyway, so. Whatever. But I get my anti monstrous at least. It does unfortunately leave Ray well in a much stronger position than I would like them. Not the end of the world. <clears throat> maybe should have waited for the next re-election? Yeah, maybe. It's alright. Let's go back down to speed three. No rushing allowed. No rushing allowed. Oh, okay. It just kept it anyways. So now we can re-elect him again. Which means now it's a little bit more reasonable to uh, think about turning him into a war wizard. A little bit more. Now here's something to keep in mind. We are conquering into Bulwar at this point. So that means that if this is not within range, I'm not going to be able to core it up quickly enough. If this isn't going to count, uh, I could take Inno, or get Inno for taking Admin Tech. Wow, my estates hate me. They'll get over it eventually. You don't make it worse, and this guy ends up your monarch. You can suddenly create a mage dynasty. That's true. He is only thirty-nine. 
Next re-election is in 67. It would be kind of a stretch, but with some lucky events, we might be able to pull it off. You can see it's one province from Ordia and Charm Vassal. True. Fair. That is possible. He's got 10,000 guys sitting on this little island. But I do want to get aboard with Marblehead because I want to attack Marblehead like now. Which is a good reason to not take this tech. Is to save up my admin so I can core all of this. Now there are some tags around here that we can release. We have Kin V Pharrell, which is a newer tag that they've added in. It's an elf tag that has cores. So we could release them as a vassal. Uh, unfortunately, Bahar can still is alive. So I cannot release them. Uh, but Kin V Pharrell might be a tag that I want to release from Marblehead. There is also Aska Everin, but it's a gold mine. I'm not sure I really want to do that. Uh, if Dartax was dead, which would have been nice, we could have released Dartax. Which would have been a fantastic vassal. And we may still want to do that. We may want to snake over to Dartax. Get a claim. Kill him really quickly. Might have to do it with Rayuel again. But kill him really quickly and then release him as a vassal. Gray Sheep. I don't want to release tags that are going to be monstrous though. Because then they have minus 100 relations. I'm currently sitting on zero... Diplomats being used, so let's go ahead and improve with our vassal. Should have allied Corvaria. No! Actually throwing! Actually throwing by being in this war! We gotta win this war fast. We win this war fast, we can ally Laurent. And since we're playing on normal... And that means we can put our dynasty onto their throne. Wait a wait a second. There's no way your truce was up. There's no world in which your truce was up that fast. Isn't it, is it from a mission? It might be from a mission that they get that subjugation CB. Because there's no world in which that was up that fast. Forget about it. No way. Move. This is gonna hurt. Uh I'm gonna get another general. Do 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 Vesper Tails, you are up. See how it goes. Hold on, I gotta Okay, I'll have to respond to that text message here in a second. Well then that's not very good either. My good well. My better general is sieging. We're tech six though. We should be fine. You son of a. All right, Marblehead. Fair enough. Maybe he leaves. He won't. Tell my peasants. Ugh. What if I give you access? Maybe you'll go and deal with them for me. He won't. But he could. Oh. Wait. Wait, he actually left. Wait, how did he get there first? Hold on. Wait a minute. Something ain't right. Wait a minute. I have six maneuver pips. Do goblins move faster? They might move faster. They probably do. Frick. We were so close. If I just left one guy behind. Damn. That's sad. Oh well. <laughs> goblins don't, but these goblins do. <laughs> these goblins specifically are just faster than you. El Bozo. 
Get over it. You'll survive. I do need to go back and deal with those rebels. Uh, he has no troops, so... These guys are fine. At the same time, I need to respond to this text. It is movie importante. Okay, 10 Navy tradition. Huge. Massive. Our navies. Truly the best of the best. Uh, speaking of navies, I should be building up my navy. 600 days is quite a while to take to build something. But you know what? It's fine. We need to have actual navy of some kind to help us out. Hordes do? Yeah, but they're not hordes. Oh, does anyone want to buy Renaissance? By the way? Offer knowledge sharing. Have a duck in a month. Damn. You're telling me that because I don't have Republican tradition as a republic, it has negative consequences? You're telling me there are consequences for my actions? They're hordes, they just can't raise and don't use horde unity. Fake horde, then. Oh, yeah. Roaming horde. 35% movement speed. Yeah, that'd do it. Bad horde. Fake horde. Can't raise? What's the point? What's the point of even living if you can't raise? When can I force re-election? It's once every 15 years. Which is quite a long time. Quite a long time. Uh, I need to be building a spy network on Rayuel. And a spy network on Abdel Tungur as well. I, I hate having to buy down this war exhaustion. It slows down our ideas, but I don't really have a choice. I'm gonna save that, but I can click this. If I get a second vassal, I can get my 50% Diplo annexation cost. Plus one Diplo rep. And then I can annex this guy super quickly, hopefully. 800 days? Yeah, it's because of unrest. Unrest, wrong religion, wrong culture. Just makes it take forever. It is what it is. Marblehead's still only tech four. <sighs> yeah, we're definitely going to immediately declare war on Marblehead, though. I don't see why I wouldn't. Yes, they outnumber me. But I have tech 6, and I can just hire more mercs if I need to. Also, the reason I'm not replacing these mercs is they're dirt cheap to have. Other mercs are going to cost lots of money. Marty Rose said to go to Ornia? Yes, I know. It's their core. Uh, if I look at subcontinents here, yeah, I need to take this, because otherwise I can't take this. Let's see, look, I'll show you. If I switch this over to Ornia, well, I guess I can, because it's, I can. But I'm going to take this. And then if I... Well, I'll just give it over to him. Okay, stop improving the Ornia. Take their money. Get rid of your core and acrid till, I suppose. I don't want to make you a vassal. I'll take your war reps, just because I can. And we'll peace out. Okay. So. Yeah, see, I can't core this stuff up because it's not... It's not correct. Um, ooh, here's something that I didn't think about. If I declare war on Marblehead here, they're going to vassalize this guy. Which means none of this is going to get cored up. Which is not so great.
But I am allied to the rent now. Uh, if I get rid of my military access to Ardenin, then I can ally Corvuria. I don't really think that's worth it, though. No, they're not going to annex them. They're going to subjugate them. Use a vassalization, CB. Uh, rival Marblehead and rival... I don't know. I mean, Arnanin is the correct choice here. But... If I do that, I can't just walk back to my territory anymore. Without going and fighting Arnanin to be able to do that. I guess I could, I could go fight Arnanin, I suppose. I, I could just do that. But I really wanted to clear war on Marblehead right now. Before they are able to take Tech 5. Not that they, I don't think they get new units to Tech 5. Do they? They're monstrous. But I don't know if goblins do. They don't? Yeah. Still though, it is a pretty big deal. To have a tech 6 advantage over tech 4. I have 15,000 to their 17,000. It is another... <laughs> it is another level 3 fort though. Coastal fort. That's rough. Got to go one nine twelve fifty. Okay. So we do have a little bit of time there. Sorry. This is a toughie. This is a toughie. Because I'd like to declare war on Arnanin, right? To take these provinces. But it's not really worth taking these until I know exactly who gets to colonize what here. And it's not like I can just go and dunk on Corvuria. Because, you know, go wed. Which is kind of a problem. Well, if I go to war with Gizden, then I can bring in Corvuria. I can call in you. I can get you in. But then I'd have to win the war pretty much on my own there, and that'd be a rough one. <laughs> Ibovar is still tech 3, though. So their 21,000 troops are paper. They're also craven. Did you end up... No, they did flip, though, which is unfortunate for us. I think we just go after Marblehead, though. Four days to take the Inno? It's only 5% more expensive. Let's do that. That's basically four free Inno right there. Get rid of our... Embargo. That'll work. Um, when can I start to integrate you? 71. Okay. 
I feel like I need more troops. He does have that six shock leader. That is going to hurt quite a bit, even if they are tech four. And I don't want to turn this guy into a general, my leader. I could get 5% more... War magic? Sorry, 5% more uh, morale by charming the military. The leader should die soon, it's their ruler. He's 39. He's not that old. I mean, he's pretty old for a goblin, maybe, but he's not that old. He'll live. Mercenary cost reductions from the adventurers? Oh. Well, technically right now we have minus 10%. But I would like to get this up to as high as possible. I don't really want to give out crown land for anything. If I can help it. Uh, what I could do is full state these provinces. That's going to give me some force limit. Let's build three more troops. It's going to really put us down low for our manpower, though. In fact, don't build that one. Let's build two. We're for Genesis 44. True. Who do we want to rival? I can rival Viacock. Not because I think I'm going to fight them, but because I'll outscale them. Could rival Bersart and Shiss if I wanted to. You've allied Irlium? Cursed. He's also dead. That could give me an alliance with Varimhar, which would be nice. To the powerful mage. I mean, no Caradir is very strong. Yeah, let's do that. Tribal Bersartensis. And. Let's try out Viacock. Doesn't really matter. And once these troops are built, then we will go to war. And then during this war, I think we improve with Varimhar so I can call them into a war against Bersartensis. Because that would break this alliance, and odds are they would just go and focus Varimhar here. Be kind of nice. Chances are someone declares war on Marblehead real soon. True. That is also a possibility. Right now they're at war with the Harpies, but that's not going to last forever. Uh, I'm so smart, actually. <laughs> we have a truce. <laughs> we have a truce with them for another year. So we have to simply be patient, chat, okay? We don't have a choice. We have to be patient. We'll go back. We'll deal with our rebels. We'll come back over and we'll fight the Gabos. Which is fine. Gives us time to get some things cored up, maybe. Uh, oh, do we keep goblins around? That is the question. Do we keep goblins or do we get rid of them temporarily and try and accept them later on? There. I mean, the best thing to do would be to accept them. Right? Clearly. It would cost, what, 200 admin points to get rid of them? Meanwhile, I could just accept them for... Like a hundred Diplo. Plus it increases tolerance. Yeah, if I half state this. 
half state this, full state this. Well, actually, we're gonna want to half state it first. I'm just about how I can get you to use this gold mine effectively. Uh, there is another option, actually, which is to give the merchant this. Makes the clergy less loyal. I would need to give them something to offset that. Like development of temples or something. But it would then mean that I don't lose goods produced based on tolerance of heathens. That sounds pretty good. And I'm not really getting my crown land back from developing. So... That'll be fine. Yeah, I can also give out the uh, expansion of Zealotry. It's free morale. Now. Now it's free morale. I, I could have gotten it for the first Goblin Wars too. The Goblin Wars. Okay, Tyrannical Nobles. No. You're not taking the tax away in my capital. No, thank you. Sorry, Basan. I cannot give you money. Not going to happen, bud. I'd love to. I really would, but no. So where next? I think we build a spy network on you. For siege ability. We improve with you. For an alliance. But then what? Prove the Ordia. It's the answer. We're going to be able to annex Ordia really quickly. Oh, I agree. We need a king, baby. We need a king. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, we should flip dictatorship soon, TM. And there's faceting. Honestly, kind of embarrassing for the rest of the world that it's 1466. Like, Varane, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Where's your prestige? That's cool. We get gems and tell them now, and we get goods produced and trade value. Sweet. That increases our economy by quite a bit. So now we just need to deal with the Celiande Separatists, which... Yeah, I kind of got to get going, so... If you could uh, please rise up, that'd be great, because... We've got some gobbos to go fight, and I got to walk my ass on over there to, <laughs> to fight them. So... Yeah. This... We are going to save scum. He is 41 years old, and I'm about to get him as a dictator. Uh, no. Uh, that's, a, that's a very solid no from me, dog. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He's not dying. Not today. Well, I mean, he will die today, probably. But not like that. So very close. So very close to getting him as a king. If we can get him as a king, there's a higher percentage chance that your heirs get... Uh, the magical trait. If your current ruler or your consort or both are powerful mages. So there's also like if you're an elf, there's a higher chance. If you're one of the silver families, there's a higher chance. A lot of chances. Uh, combine powerful mage parent, magical elite. Yeah, get Magical Elite, get a Powerful Mage parent, be an elf, and you're, like, guaranteed to get that. Powerful Mage. Yeah, Powerful Mages do get increased lifespan. And he's not even a general, so I kind of got scammed. I got scammed. And I am not ashamed to bird, because I need to conquer the entire world, starting with 16 development. So, <laughs> no, okay. No, not gonna happen. I'm good. Ain't no way. Alright. 
We'll probably go for another like half hour, I'm thinking. Maybe a little longer. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Miss Majocratic ideas. Oh, the the unbalancedness of <laughs> homebrew ideas. So many people need so many things. Everybody needs everybody needs stuff right now. Do people need to talk to you before stream? No. Do people need to talk to you after stream? No. Do people need to talk to you during stream? Yes, absolutely. It's the most important thing right now. Right now. We do, in fact, need... Oh, I said I needed a king and then he died. Ugh. Maybe he was assassinated. I didn't think about that. We got faceting. Very good. Uh, wish you could learn if a candidate was a powerful mage. Like, maybe if they ran on that issue. Mage representation is important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what mages are known for. Representing people. <laughs> they definitely don't just represent themselves and their own interests. No, 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 no. They love everybody. Mages. Well known for not being power-hungry people. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. Get all of our boats together over here. There's our truce with Marvel head up, so we're only like a month or two behind. Except to 21,000 troops. But I honestly think we're fine. Time monstrous, stop improving here. Do I have any Diplo slots available? No, I don't. I took the Dame for idea cost, haven't taken a single idea. Anti monstrous, yes. Let's go. Are you loyal? You are loyal. That's almost surprising. Ooh. Um. Let's put him to attaching. It's fine. Also, did I give out those privileges? Yeah, I did. President declares himself dictator. Intricate assassination flash ground. Takes years. We're very proud of it. Pull your vote with time stone. Undoes all your hard work. <laughs> you failed this time. No assassination. Honestly, L. I'll take that, you know. No much satire gone too far. Uh, I'll spend the money for the tolerance. Now, we do have more galleys. I don't know if we actually win these, though. But maybe we don't need to win these. They're fighting really well. Okay. Uh, I don't have a claim on you. Let's get a claim. Like, oh no, he is, he is moving towards my navy. He is very confident he can beat it. Yeah, I'm good. I was going to say, maybe we can like sneak by him and just sit in the Gulf of Glass and we'll just stare at each other, but uh, no, he feels quite, qual quite confident words. That was a gold mine? I know it was the gold mine. It doesn't matter. I can't state it up till after I take out Abdel Tunker anyways. It's fine. I know, I know. Uh, also, peace deal. Looks good to me. Take pure ale. Take this. Take the gold mine. Um. Money. That'll work. So we'll need to build a spy network on Dartax. Before we end this war. So that way I can annex him immediately and then release him as a vassal. You're off. All right, Ingo, thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. Hope you have a good one. I'll also be live tomorrow. Hopefully. I mean, I should be. Uh, where we will continue the run. And, of course, the VODs will go up onto the VOD channel. Ooh, that's bad. Uh, 
Ugh, that's really bad. The, they're gonna stop me from coring things, but I can't core it anyways. Also, I've been thinking about simulcasting, simul streaming, multicasting, I don't know, whatever they call it. Where I also stream to the YouTubes. I think I'm gonna start doing that um, to the main channel. Number one, I won't have to upload VODs anymore, so that's a positive. Uh, number two, if, then if I just wanna stream on YouTube as well, I can do that. I don't know how to do that, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. I took tech five. VODs on YouTube, we all win. Exactly. I don't have to upload the VODs specifically, and the VODs are still up. It's a win for literally everybody. There are so many goblins. There are so many of them. This is going to take forever. Does he really beat me? It no way. No way he actually beats me. Do you have like galley combat ability or something? No. What's your navy tradition compared to mine? He's got 0.2 more morale. He does get 10% morale from goblin navy. But I have three more galleys. I'm gonna move my navy out. Maybe he comes and fights me. Republican traditions debated. Oh, there is no debate. We have none. Rise of a despot. The lack of respect for the Republic has slowly eroded its foundations. To preserve the stability of the state, protector Castente Bad Hall has proclaimed himself dictator for life. Uh, we get 10% morale of armies, minus 0 0.075 monthly autonomy change, and plus 40 max absolutism. Uh, I think that's legitimately the fastest that I have ever become a dictator with this. Uh, I do get to choose one of these, but... Oh, wait. Doesn't this person need to die? For the dictatorship to solidify? So we're going to have to lose this guy anyways. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay. Um, Murdercrack rules. Devotion of the people. Gives minus five years of separatism. Now we just consolidate power. Uh, well, in that case. I might as well just turn him into a general, right? There's really no reason not to. The sooner he dies, the sooner we become a monarchy. No, he is beating me. I did sink one of his galleys, though. So not, you know, all terrible. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel our access with Arnon in here. Got a feeling we don't want Marblehead running over to my thing. Planned coup. I really don't want nine regiments to rise up and tell them. So I'm going to spend the money. Yeah, cancel the military access. 
They're just gonna go to Battle Ord, which is fine. I should win the Siege Race. Do I have Siege Magic? I do. It's 10 admin points. All right. Minus 33% defensiveness, not bad. This is another reason that you want Powerful Mage, is because you can use it to get Siege ability. And even though it does cost Monarch points, sometimes, like on very difficult Sieges, it is worth it. There we go. So that's their capital taken. Let's go turn around and fight them. Attach and attach. They're not taking Battle Lord. Well, eventually they would take it, so. Let's just walk up and say hello. Okay. Talk about a throw and a half. Yeah, they just left those troops to die. No other way to put it. That is the most generous interpretation of what just happened. Is they just left those troops to die. <laughs> okay. Alright. Whatever you say, man. Uh, let's start building that spy network up on Dartax. And let's rearrange this a bit. Let's send the mercs onto the siege. The war wizard. You guys can get all of this occupied. You know, we hope he doesn't just turn around and immediately try and fight us again. He does have 10,000 troops, but it would probably be all right. We immediately got a wall breach. Huge. There are mountain hugger separatists here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are they running to? I didn't like that. Oh, they don't know what to do because all of the mountain hugger cores are currently occupied by mountain hugger. So they don't have anywhere they can actually siege. Funny. <laughs> Funny. We have hardy seamen, guys. Huge. Truly the hardiest of all. There's a solid plus 200% staff cost increase. Is he just being very annoying and holding on that mountain? Because honestly, that would be a level of pettiness that I could respect. No, he's not. Um. Yeah, let's go fight him. Combine together. Move down. Move down. Bring everyone together and then we'll go fight. I uh, don't know what that just said. I should have looked. But I'm pretty sure that said someone's about to declare war on Marhold. Or on Marblehead. So let's not let that happen. Let's get there first. Goodbye, sweet Marblehead. Skill issue! That's what I say. Simply be better next time. I didn't die as Marblehead, so what's your excuse, AI? You don't have a human brain? L. Simply... <laughs> just biologically better than this computer, guys. It's true. I am. I'm simply built different. Easy. They're destined to collapse? No. That's not true. In canon, they don't die. Oh, that's a lot of attrition. No thanks. Uh, we can purchase an age ability. Decentralized Ambinar is what we choose. We had to get all sweaty and pull a major like that. True. Player's min-maxing. He's cheating. Mods, get him. Okay. Well, that is 91% war score. Yep, 
Yeah. So we peace out. We claim Dart Act. How many Diplos slots do I have? I release Kin V Pharrell. Actually, I guess I don't need to release Kin V Pharrell. I could, though. But wouldn't I rather get influence ideas for the Diplo rep and then annex? Probably. So we get powerful duchies? Yep, we're going to be able to get that once we vassalize this guy. We'll, we'll annex him, then we'll vassalize him. Then 32 monies is pretty good. Yeah. Claim that. Claim that. We are going to have to go back and do with these rebels soon, too. All right. Beautiful. Claim. And declare war immediately. We are a great power. Bar Candy Rebels immediately rose up. They did not hesitate, not one single bit. Okay. What? Oh, right. He's got extra garrison stuff so send a guy on there to help out and don't know which army you are go do with rebels that's a five shot even the freaking <sighs> even the rebels have better generals than I do L actually major L They're out to get me, I know, I know. The game's like, hmm, you had a good start? I don't think so. <laughs> I, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, can I get there in time? Because that would give us a defensive hills fight. Nope. The answer was, in fact, no. Let's get uh, 15 galleys. No sailors? L. No sailors. Everthill declares war on Mountain Hugger. That's not who I thought was going to go after Mountain Hugger, but sure. That's fine. Sure. Uh, I have two free diplomats here. I don't know if I really want to ally you anymore. You have 11,000 troops. Wouldn't it just be better if I killed you? How is Tlucked still alive? Guaranteed by Eliza. Yeah, it'd be like that. Killing is never the answer? No, no. It is. This is a U4. Killing is always the answer. Start building a spy network on Arnonen. We don't have any aggressive expansion over here, so that's bad. So it's time to kill Arnonen. Tordonen? Oh, oh, that's tempting. It'd be very nice. I need to finish this war first, though. Sorry, just has insulted me. Yeah, well, for starting chest, you better watch yourself. Can I like ear Liam? Can I force you to break your alliance? No. Apparently I had Dame Steer. Okay. That's fine, I guess. Do this. Annex. 
I probably want to delete this fort. I don't think I need it. Oh, right. They changed Akedbar to Urban. That's not good. Because your boy does not have access. Uh, yeah, attach there. Speed. I am speed. Yeah, this used to be farmlands, but now it's urban, so <laughs> it's actually a, a good fort. It's a usable fort. Okay, annex you. Full annex. Give me your money. Don't get rid of any cores. Thank you very much. Release Dartax. Thank you. He did, in fact, have a core on this province. Fine. Fine. Okay. Whatever. So I lose the gold mine. L. Uh, not a big deal. I go to the nobility. I say, hey, strong duchies, please. They go, okay. I then go, hey. You. You. I don't like that you exist anymore. I can't annex you for another year. Ordia, congratulations. You have officially been scutaged. You're welcome. So they will now be annexed uh, in one year. Yeah. We'll do with these rebels. And then we're going to go to war with Arnanin. Specifically to grab these four provinces. Hopefully this gets done in time. We have these four provinces. Maybe their capital, we'll see. Because I want to be able to go to war with Corvuria and get a connection here, which would be nice. And once Ordia is annexed, and I have this connection, then I can core all of Bulwar regularly. It's 1470. San Martel has not happened yet. And the elves are just waiting to be conquered. I mean, that's a pretty good start. I won't lie. We only had one war that really went kind of painfully. Sucks that I don't have the gold mine, but, you know, whatever. I can always seize it if I really care. We're not in a bunch of debt at the moment, which is good. Things are things are looking good, but I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for today. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a pretty good spot to end it on. Rebels, you know, manpower's looking alright, money's looking fine. Jad is strong ish. But yeah, I, I think we're in a pretty good spot to expand into Bulwar. Uh, and of course, I can start adding things to trade companies. Right, that's the only one that I have for now, but. I can also start to core this stuff. I can't core all of it because it's blockaded. In fact, that means I should probably give Jezdbar over to Dartax. It's a pretty good choice. I don't want to raise autonomy in a lot of spots. Uh, we're definitely going to want to take these two out. They are only allied to each other, so that's free. Go blood dries, take them out. In fact, we may want to do that instead of Arnanin. Because we can keep Arnanin happy with us for a while, keep getting that access through both these guys, and then we can just full annex Krathenor. And they are Regent Core, so will make people mad. We'll see, though. He said attack. No, I think we just keep it. Remember, we're trying to split up our admin and our diplo points. We don't want to overuse one too much for expansion. And I have plenty of admin points, and we don't have to take tech for a while. But I do need diplo for tech and for ideas. I would love this minus 50% unjustified demands. That's going to save us so much diplo points. So many diplo points. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are going to wrap it up for today. Thank you all for hanging out. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll be live tomorrow. Uh, let me save that 
save that. Okay. Yeah, we'll be live tomorrow uh, with more Tellum gameplay. Uh, let's check and see if there's anybody playing Ambinar right now out there in the wide world of Twitch. Go back. For. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Click that. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Is there anybody out there playing some Ambinar? Um. No, not looking like it. Okay. Well, you know what? We'll just wrap it up there for today. I suppose that's fine. Win MP, uh, wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, if you're interested in multiplayer games, Lambert does a lot of multiplayer stuff. So you go join his Discord. You'll probably be able to find a spot to join in. Uh, that's going to be it for today. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. Stream tomorrow. Real stream tomorrow, I swear. I promise. Tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow.